Give me ten years and we go over the final few weeks of the season. Big plays decide big games, and San Diego State needed a big play last weekend against Wyoming, blocking a 57-yard field goal to preserve a 24-22 Aztec win. San Diego State needs more big plays. Coming up next, the Aztecs against Colorado State. Tonight's Aztec football game brought to you by Avis. We're trying harder than ever. From San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium on a beautiful Saturday night, the Aztecs go for another win. They welcome Colorado State to town as San Diego State needs a win to set up a showdown for first place in the Western Athletic Conference. Good evening, everyone. This is Lee Hamilton. Along with the quarterback, Mark Halda, Brad Sesmat will be joining us early. Big ball game against Colorado State. Must win game because BYU has already won today. Must win game to force a showdown for the Holiday Bowl berth next week with the Cougars. Return to form. Marshall Falk, great running back coming back. Badly hurt in that game against New Mexico. I don't think anybody realized how badly dinged up he was. Not when we first saw the play, but after reviewing it, you can see how the rib injury did occur. San Diego State, big time for Marshall Falk to come back against Colorado State, get a game under his belt before he goes back against the Cougars next week. Falk will start in this game, and of course will rotate with T.C. Wright and Wayne Pittman. Colorado State comes in struggling. They've had quarterback problems. They've got a good little running back in Brian Copeland. They like to throw the football to Greg Primus. Going to be a big game for Earl Bruce's club. They would love to play the role of the spoiler. We'll be back with more from the stadium. Stay with us. Hamilton and the quarterback Mark Halda back here at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium on a beautiful Saturday night as the Aztecs get ready to meet Colorado State and Mark Al Luganville has his team exactly where he wants them prepared to go to a bowl game if they win tonight and they win against BYU. Aztecs control their own destiny. They've worked all year long to get to this point. Big game tonight. Let's go down to the sidelines. There are a lot of unique storylines to this must game for San Diego State. Brad Sesmat's got one of them. Brad? Lee, of course, Marshall Falk is back in the lineup for San Diego State tonight, coming back from those cracked ribs and the punctured lung. He'll be wearing a flak jacket, and the way that it is designed, it will wrap around his waist. The one that he is wearing is a bit smaller than the one that I'm holding currently, and it's also air-filled. It's specially made for Marshall Falk. But this is what it looks like, and it'll just wrap right around the ribcage area, and that's what they'll use to protect his ribs. Head coach Al Luganville told me during warm-ups that Marshall looked fresh, but he will monitor the amount of plays that Marshall uses tonight out on the football field. They'll also use Wayne Pittman in the backfield. T.C. Wright will return punts. Leap. Thanks, Brad. Now let me ask you a question, Mark, as it relates to the flak jacket. How does that affect Falk? holding the football yeah if he's not used to it it's going to affect him because the ball is used to cradling it close to his body now he's not going to be able to feel that you know running backs get a feel when they can feel the ball next to their body they tuck it inside their arm and they feel it next to their their rib cage marshall won't be able to feel that tonight it'll be interesting to see how he protects the football if he runs more with both hands over the ball uh, it, it's something that may not affect but something that may affect and cause a turnover early He's got to get popped a couple of times. It's one thing to get bumped in practice. It's another thing to get nailed by the enemy. Do you think a running back might be tentative as, as we talk about the Aztecs and the Rams? Because this has always been a very physical series. I, I think running backs are more tentative when it's a knee injury, something in their legs. Marshall's going to run, and whether he wants to or not, he's going to get hit hard. But the flak jacket, if you've ever put one on, you, someone can take a baseball bat, swing as hard as they can, and the flak jacket distributes the blow. Earl Bruce has done a great job at Fort Collins. Here's the guy that was at Ohio State, came in after getting bumped from OSU, went to Northern Iowa for a year, and then on to Fort Collins. 
He had a 500 season his first year, a bowl season his second year, struggling a little bit this year as his team gets ready to receive the opening kickoff. Yeah, he's got 149 career wins. I'm sure the Rams would like to give him 150 tonight. I'm sure that's a motivational tool that the Rams are using. Andy Trakis getting ready to kick off for San Diego State. Aztecs will move right to left on the dial as we go to the first quarter. Deep for Colorado State, Greg Primus along with Mark Holmes. Aztecs win tonight. They set up the showdown for first place in the Holiday Bowl berth next Saturday night against Brigham Young. Trakis ready to tee it off. San Diego State's got eight guys to the far side of the ball. Near side hash mark, and he hammers it to the goal line. He's going to bring it out. Ahead to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, and he gets cranked as he got it out to the 15-yard line. Big hit by Aztecs linebacker Chad Provensal. So Colorado State will operate from the 15-yard line as Kevin Verdugo will come in at quarterback. This Aztec defense has given up a lot of yards the last couple of weeks. Not going to say they're springing leaks, but they've had some problems. Yeah, they have. They've given up the big play. Aztecs have, you know, not allowed too many teams first downs, not allowed too many team third down conversions, but they've given up the big play, something they can't afford to do tonight. Verdugo is the quarterback, fumbles the snap, and we have a penalty flag. Aztecs have recovered the ball at the 15-yard line. Verdugo came out from underneath early without the football, and a penalty flag flew. San Diego State covered it, but I think we got procedure against the Rams. It will be a dead ball penalty. So the snap is taken off the books, as is the fumble recovery. The right guard, Bob Cox, moved first, negating the play. So five-yard penalty. Break for Colorado State. Taraj Smith was on that fumble. The defensive lineman should do. Locate the ball, jump on it. I've seen them let plays like that go and, and give the turnover. That time, the official stopped before the play was snapped. So they operate from the 10-yard line. Yeah. Running back, the fullback. And Copeland is the tailback. Play action, Verdugo looking long. We have a penalty flag throwing deep down the sidelines to Primus. It's incomplete. We have a penalty flag back up the field. Verdugo trying to hit Greg Primus on a fly pattern down the sidelines. That penalty flag was thrown very early in the play. Thrown very early and by the back judge. They may get Chris Johnson for holding. Verdugo just play action fake trying to hit the Aztecs deep with a big play. Throwing to his favorite receiver, Greg Primus. Nice coverage that time by John Lewis. Ball was just a little bit overthrown. It'll be interesting to see. I think the tight end getting off the ball, Chris Johnson held him up. And that's what the back judge was looking at. I think that's what he called. So the holding call defensively will move the football all the way out to the 20-yard line. A 10-yard penalty. So have yet to have an official snap in this football game. Procedure call, Rams, defensive hold, Aztecs, and, and the ball is out to the 21-yard line. Kevin Verdugo at quarterback. They are operating without their starting fullback, John Ivlo, who was scratched because of a thigh injury after warm-ups. Here is the give to Copeland off the right side, crosses the 25, and fights out to about the 26-yard line. Brian Copeland, 5'9", 195, a senior out of Security, Colorado, leading rusher on this ball club, averaging about four and a half yards per carry. Yeah, and the Aztecs are seeing a split backfield, two running backs, something they haven't seen in a while, lead fullback blocking for Copeland. Copeland's a tough runner. He'll get a lot of yardage in between the tackles, setting up play action for Verdugo. So it'll bring up a second down. Here is the counterplay. Copeland coming left, 25, darts to the 30, outside all the way ahead to the 35-yard line. And running him down from uh, the back side, Andy Cobiello. So Brian Copeland, who came into the football game with 641 yards rushing, back-to-back -back runs, gets Colorado State the first down. Their offensive line is big. They are anchored by Mike Padilla, who is a senior out of L.A. Banning. He is probably their best lineman. They got a huge right tackle in uh, Jason Basso. Verdugo is the quarterback. Copeland is the heavy-duty guy. Primus is the big-time wide receiver in their offense. First and 10, and the ball's out at the 36. Two tight ends, one receiver. They're going to run the ball. Copeland right side, cuts back inside, gets cut down. Lou Foster leading the surge. Damon Pieri, though, was the guy that forced him to cut back inside, and when he got cut back inside, boy, Foster chopped them. And credit Robert Griffith, too. That time the dime back came on an outside blitz, took the pulling lineman, made the fullback cut back inside. Foster was there to make the tackle. 
the Aztecs with Taraj Smith, Sebastian Glaze, Eric Duncan up front. Duncan's really played well since moving from nose tackle to defensive end. The linebacking core as is. Kobe Yellow, Foster, Terrell Steen, and of course Robert Griffith, the dime back. Second and 11 from the 35-yard line. Man in motion left for Dugo to throw. Here comes the blitz, and sets up, throws. Crossing pattern caught at the 40, to the 50, down to the 40, and knocked out of bounds. Mark Holmes, a wide receiver on a crossing pattern over the middle, gets it all the way into the Aztec 32-yard line. Holmes, a six-foot, 186-pound senior out of Englewood, Colorado, 33-yard completion. That play stuff on the Aztec defense. That time the Aztecs again coming with a blitz. Flow went left. The right, the left corner for San Diego State just collapsed inside, allowing Holmes to cut back across the grain. Just a little, really little pick play run to the left side. Holmes just sneaks out. Verdugo doing a nice job delivering the ball on time in the face of a blitz. Big game for the Rams. First down and 10. It's in at the San Diego State 32. They run it. Penalty flag, and we're going to get motion again, I am sure, against Colorado State. Kind of a multiple choice exam. Either somebody on the right side or somebody on the left side will officially be called for procedure, but they were all moving. Yeah, I think the big right tackle, Jason Bass, moved a little bit before the snap count. Colorado State, coached by Earl Bruce, always have had good running teams. It looks like that's what they're establishing tonight. They're going to need good run support defensively. Yeah, they're going to need team. people to force him. Damon Perry is going to have to be a guy with Chris Johnson if they read run to get there to force him back inside so that the flow can cut him down. And Damon Perry, the third leading tackler in the WAC, he's no stranger to making those tackles. First and 15, and the ball comes back to the 37. Holmes will go in motion to the left. Copeland is the lone running back. They run Copeland, delay straight up 35, 30, and a nice tackle from behind. If the Aztecs don't get there and make that tackle, Daryl Lewis doesn't grab him around the shoe tops. He may take off for big time yardage. Daryl Lewis, we're starting to see more and more of him. It's just a little counter play by Colorado State. Nice job up front, getting the surge. Daryl Lewis coming, filling inside out. Daryl's been doing a fine job defensively stopping the run. Big hitter, one of the bigger hitters for the Aztec defensive secondary. Copeland gets a nine. He is their leading rusher. Second down and six, and it's at the Aztec 28-yard line in a scoreless first quarter. From play action, Verdugo to throw. Guns it, caught in at the 18-yard line, but they rule the receiver. Primus was out of bounds. Nice catch by Greg Primus. As Verdugo off play action rifled that thing down the sidelines, Primus went up, was inbounds when he left his feet, was not inbounds when he came down with the ball. Yeah, Verdugo showing why he's a top-rated quarterback. Andy Coviello coming and pressuring, but Verdugo doing a nice job stepping up. That time, John Lewis making a nice play defensively stripping the ball. Third down and six, and the ball's at the 28-yard line. Rams are second in the conference in third down conversions. The blitz comes, throws, caught at the 20 to the 15, and Holmes is down to the 12-yard line. They had a blitz coming. Verdugo got hammered, and yet he got the pass off. 16-yard completion to Holmes, the far sidelines. First down, Colorado State in at the 11-yard line. And Colorado State looking like they want to move the pocket a little bit left or a little bit right, set up behind the tackles to avoid some of that Aztec pressure. Verdugo, big at 6'3", 210, showing he's not afraid to stand in there in the midst of that blitz. With that completion, he passes Aztec quarterback coach Steve Fairchild on the Colorado State passing list. The ball's at the 11. They run it. Copeland coming left, gets sideswiped and dropped immediately. Robert Griffith, great hustle. Kobe Yellow and Damon Pieri all there to make the stop, not allowing Copeland to get around the corner. So we're four minutes into the first quarter in a scoreless game, but Colorado State has marched into Aztec territory. It's down at the 12. And Lee, this is a new look for San Diego State defensively. They haven't faced a two-back set. And that's a little bit different. They've been going against one-back sets and running two teams. It's going to take them a while to get used to this I-formation split-back uh, formation. Primus left, Olsen right. Here's the give. The fullback is hit behind the line of scrimmage and drop. It looked as if it might be an option-type play as they handed to the big fullback but Tommy Romero never got out of the backfield. And he was dropped for a loss of about a yard. I think Eric Duncan coming in from his defensive end spot. Kevin Verdugo is not your prototype college option quarterback. Again, running option into the boundary. I don't know why they would really not run it to the side of the field. The Aztecs have seen the option. They've done a good job of defending it the last few weeks. So Verdugo is now looking at a third down and 11. Holmes comes in motion to the right. Here is Verdugo back to throw. Slant pattern caught in at the four-yard line, but the tackle made immediately. 
as Verdugo guns it on a slant pattern, but the Aztecs make the stop defensively right on the money. So Colorado State is looking at a fourth down, very, very tough fourth down play to make, too, because it'll be fourth down and about four after the completion to Holmes. Yeah, the Rams' offensive staff doing a nice job mixing up the plays. That time they sent Holmes in motion from the left side of formation all the way across. Looked like he may have started forward before the ball was snapped. Looked like he was going to run an out route, came back underneath. Give Gary Taylor credit for staying with him and, and, and keeping the, uh, the Rams out of the end zone. Mike Brown will come on to attempt a 21-yard field goal for Colorado State. The snap out of the Jerry Dunn hold. It's up, and it is good. So Colorado State marches the length of the field and gets a field goal from Mike Brown. Ten minutes, five seconds to go here in the first quarter. We take a timeout. CSU leads 3-0. Colorado State, by virtue of a Mike Brown field goal, takes the lead, 3-0, five minutes into the opening quarter. Getting ready to kick off for the Rams, Peter Ransau, Darnay Scott, the deep man for San Diego State, is averaging 24 yards per kickoff return. High, but a very short kick. Scott's got it at the 11th, to the 15, to the 20, straight ahead, steps through a tackle out to the 30, down the sidelines to the 35, to the 37, and it's run out of bounds, and we had a penalty flag on the pile as he goes up over the CSU bench. So not only is Darnay Scott giving San Diego State great field position, I think we're going to get a personal foul penalty mark tacked back onto it. Boy, he ran through a couple tackles. Yeah, I tell you, Al Luganbill all week long was praising the toughness of Darnay Scott out of the four freshmen. He feels Darnay Scott not only may have the best athletic ability, but be the toughest. He found the wedge that time, kept his feet movingly. So oftentimes you see when you get hit that a lot of these running backs, return guys will just stop their feet from moving. Darnay didn't do that, made a big play. So Colorado State, which went 11 plays, 80 yards, and ate up nearly five minutes off the first quarter clock, gives all that back. Darnay Scott, 28-yard kick return and a personal foul penalty tacked onto it. First down and 10 for David Lowry. The Aztecs have Patrick Rowe lined up as a tight end. They got three wide receivers to the right and Falks in motion. Lowry to throw everybody into the pattern. Throws caught by Patrick Rowe in at the 41-yard line. Well, they pick up about four on the play. Now, that's a strange look coming out throwing with four wide receivers and a back going into the pattern. It's a strange look. Patrick typically does not line up a tight end early. They move him during the game, but not early. Maybe they felt that Marshall was going to draw a lot of attention. It was a good way to get Patrick the ball quick and early. So the Aztecs offensive line does not have Carson Liamini in the starting lineup tonight. Jennings, Koenig, Macon, Hines, and Tony Nichols. The group inside. Falk the running back. They give it to him. Counterplay. Starts right. Cuts through the hole. Gets to the 40. And then gets gang tackled up high. Yeah, that time is a little counterplay. I think that was more or less to give Marshall a feel of you're going to get hit. When you run him up inside between the tackles, he'll get hit from three or four different sides. Aztec coaches just wanted to see Marshall pop up, been able to take that hit, get comfortable with the flag jacket, holding on to the football. Again, Marshall coming up inside the tackles, both hands around the football that time. You'll see him, as the game wears on, feel more comfortable, feel more at ease with the offense. He's been out three weeks. So Lowry is the quarterback. Falk stays in at running back. Merton Harris is in at a wide receiver. Lowry will throw. Deep drop on third down. Guns it. Diving for the football is Maxi. I'm sorry, it's Falk at the first down marker, but I think he's short. I think he's short by about a yard. Falk on a delay coming out of the backfield, crossed open underneath. Lowry, I think, was looking deeper, but could not find the guys and then came back to Marshall Falk down low. That yeah, gives David credit. He saw that the his receivers downfield were covered, came back to Marshall. Marshall's taught to get past the first down marker before you hook up. It's called a stick play. That time Marshall hooked up a couple yards in front of the, the, the first down marker and really hurt their chance for a first down. Well, Al Loganville is not going for it. It's fourth down and about one, and they're going to punt it. Savorn to boot it away. And instead of cough and corner it, rams it to the five. It takes a San Diego State bounce, and it's going to be down right there. Great break by the Aztecs. Great coverage by Zach Stokes downfield, and San Diego State pins Colorado State back at the five. We'll take a timeout. Rams lead 3-0. 
Back here at the stadium, let's get down to the sidelines. Here's Brad Sesmack. Of course, Lee, this uh, matchup between San Diego State and Colorado State, a big game for a number of reasons, but namely for recruiting. The Aztecs haven't played the Rams since 1988. And Colorado State has come into Southern California and into Arizona, key recruiting points for the Aztecs, and nabbed 14 players over the last two years. So head coach Al Luganville wants to send a message out to the Colorado State people. Well, San Diego State just sent a message to running back Brian Copeland on that first down carry. He got popped, helmet high tackle. Robert Griffith came a call and stepped into the hole and nailed him. Aztec defensive lineman doing a good job taking on the trapper, Adam Whitmar. He comes and traps on the Aztec defense. When they force him inside, it gives Griffith the opportunity to come up and take the running back helmet high, as you called it. Tough two yards for Copeland. Second down and eight, Colorado State. The ball is out at their own 10-yard line. One running back, play action. Verdugo under pressure, throws, caught out at the 20-yard line by the tight end, Mark Smith. Boy, Verdugo started the bootleg left as he turned up to look for a receiver. All he saw was a black shirt, and yet he got the ball away to Mark Smith. Big 6'5 sophomore out of Kokomo, Indiana. A little bootleg play similar to the one the Aztecs run. What's really impressive about Verdugo is that he steps up, and when he gets hit, he still throws and concentrates on the target. Damon Pieri wrapping up, and that was close to being an incompletion. Look, the ball may have come out as he hit the ground. Seven and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Rams football, first down and 10, out at their own 20-yard line. Here is the give, and we get a penalty flag, and I think they're going to blow this thing dead. I think uh, we got procedure again against one of the offensive linemen on the right-hand side. Procedure is the call, and Colorado State will be flagged again. Yeah, it looks like the right side of the line is on uh, Mountain Standard Time, and the left side of the line is on Pacific Standard Time. Uh, they got to get their signals crossed, and that's, that's atypical for an Earl Bruce coach team. His teams very rarely are penalized. In fact, Colorado State coming into the game, the second least penalized team in the WAC. So they move the football back to the 15. Rams lead 3-0, and they got their hands on the ball again. It'll be first down and 15. Verdugo, 4-5 for 67 yards here in this first quarter. He's thrown it well. Steve Hodge is in at fullback with Copeland the tailback out of the eye. Off play action. Verdugo to throw, throws over the middle, drop. Receiver was wide open. Freshman Eric Olson, wide open, burped it up out at uh, beyond the 25-yard line, and that was one that should have been caught and might have gone for even more had it been caught. I think so. I tell you, Kevin Verdugo, though, putting the ball behind Eric Olson, Eric Freshman, out of San Marcos, California, here in San Diego. I think the ball could have been put a little bit in front of him. Had he hit him in stride, it would have been a big play. Fortunately for John Lewis and the Aztec defense, the ball was on his back shoulder pad, still could have been caught, but that was the reason it was dropped. Three wide receivers to the right. Now check that, that's two wide receivers as Copeland's coming out of the game. Here is Verdugo, quarterback draw, gonna run it, gets to the 15, gets to the 20 with one of his linemen pushing him along the way. Tom Romero, and he got the ball all the way out to the 22-yard line. I think what they did lead that time is they brought in Anthony Hill, a freshman from University High School here in San Diego. He's the runner of the two. In fact, he started last week against Brigham Young, his first start. Gives him more mobility, and I think what you'll do is he'll come in in certain situations to run quarterback jaws, option, run the football. Third down and eight for Colorado State, and the ball's at the 22-yard line. Hodge is the lone running back. Verdugo is back in at quarterback, back to throw. Verdugo looks right, throws a sideline pattern incomplete. It looked like it was contact. Earl Bruce is jumping up and down. Bruce is really upset. He thought Gary Taylor forearmed the receiver in the back as he made his break to go to the sideline after the ball. Earl will not win that battle, so Verdugo and the offense will come off the field. Well, Earl was right. There's no question Gary Taylor gave him a forearm shiver, except the ball was thrown about eight stories too high. Uh, Gary Taylor was, and the receiver about the mezzanine level. That ball was uncatchable. The reason the flag wasn't called. Alan Glazer on to punt for CSU. Rockets it. High spiral. TC right on the runs. Got it. 41. Comes left to the 45 to the 50 and then gets knocked down as he gets it into the Colorado State 47 yard line. 38 yard punt. 13 yard return by TC Wright. The Aztec special teams, their kick return, punt return people doing a great job. Yeah, Chris Johnson that time making a nice peel back block. 
close to being a clip, but Chris knew they'd get his helmet in front of the defensive man. That wasn't a clip, allowed T.C. Wright to take the ball straight up the field for a nice return. Get a sneak preview of San Diego State basketball Monday night when they host the Latvia national team at Peterson Gym at 8 p.m. Here is David Lowry, first down and 10, looks left under pressure, throws caught by the tight end. Ray Rowe tossed out of bounds in at the 46-yard line. They only pick up uh, a yard on that play as Lowry was rolling left under all kinds of pressure. And David looked like he wanted to go deep, a little counter play. Marshall Falk, not a bad person to fake the ball to. Couldn't find anybody, just came up underneath to Ray. Had a tough time getting away for big yardage, only a couple-yard gain. And Nice news for the Aztecs, Carson Liamiti back in the ballgame. Colorado State defensive line anchored by an outstanding tackle, Mike Pagel. Here is the give to Falk on the counter, coming left, fights to the 40-yard line, and he gets thrown out of bounds with a helmet-high tackle. But Falk pops right back up there. Marshall came into the game, 983 yards on the season, averaging 7.9 yards per carry. We told you about the Rams defensive front led by Mike Pagel. Their linebacking core has got a great young sophomore in Brian Schneider. He's out of Arveda, California. The secondary is led by Selwyn Jones, who's got 15 career interceptions. It's third down and three for the Ram uh, Aztecs. The ball's at the 40. Lowry to throw. Looks right, throws right. Receiver as it off his hands and the drop. He had a receiver open deep. But the ball was dropped by Selwyn Jones, who stepped in there with stride for stride, and then as the pass kind of came up short, I'm wondering if the Aztecs ran the wrong route because he threw it almost right into the hands of the defensive back. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he was going to Patrick Rodeep or Merton Harris underneath. Now, it looked like the same play he hit Merton for three big times last week against Wyoming. Kind of the ball sailed on David, kind of knuckled out of his hands. Selwyn Jones flat out dropped that one. On comes Savorn to punt, back deep. Harlan Carroll for Colorado State. 3 0 Rams lead. Five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Savorn tries to cough and corner it. He rockets it, hits at the five, and scoots into the end zone. He tried to boot it away from Harlan Carroll. So Colorado State is going to take over, and the football will be at the 20. We'll take a timeout with just over five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Rams lead 3 0. Just over five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Mike Brown with a field goal, the only scoring of the game, and it's a 3-0 Colorado State. San Diego State's had two possessions, has not been able to move the ball, and have had good field position in both possessions. Yeah, and it's, it's atypical. The Rams have been outscored 73-27 to in the first quarter. They're normally not fast starters. Here is Verdugo on an option right, runs to the 25, crosses the 25, gets out about to the 27-yard line. So Kevin Verdugo on an option coming to the right-hand side gets him seven yards on that first down carry. Monday night football is something special in San Diego. Join Chet Forty for the mighty 690 Monday night football parties at the Padres Pub in the Doubletree Hotel in Mission Valley. Monday night football with Chet Forty at the Padres Pub. Second down and three, and the ball is at the 27-yard line. Colorado State leading 3-0. Greg Primus goes in motion. Verdugo, play action, steps into the pocket, gets hit, looks long, throw, and intercepted in at the 38-yard line. That ball hung up there a long way, and Robert Griffith, who shadowed the receiver, had the angle, the position, and the interception. Yeah, great play by Robert Griffith locating the ball, but a better play by an Aztec, Lou Foster, delivering a blow to Kevin Verdugo. He had gotten away throwing, getting hit, but when you throw a deep ball and you get hit planted in the chest, sometimes the ball doesn't go where you want it to. It's time to force the ball to be short. And Robert Griffith doing a nice job defensively locating the ball as it was thrown short, making the interception. So San Diego State with its eighth interception of the season. They take over at the 38-yard line. First down and 10. They're going to run it with Falk straight ahead. Spins out of a tackle across the 40. And Marshall dives out to about the 44-yard line. So Louisiana Lightning, who needed 17 yards to crack the 1,000-yard barrier. Well, you wonder what he'd have if he had stayed healthy all year. Well, you really do wonder. He gets his 17 yards, ties Emmett Smith for the earliest freshman to, to, to rush for 1,000 yards to be his seventh game. The Aztecs is going big on big. I think you'll see him get the ball to Marshall. Three carries, 12 yards for Falk. Second and four. Inside handoff. Here comes Falk. 
Bart bolting across the 50 and into the 49-yard line. Marshall Falk gets eight on the carry. Exact same play they ran on first down, just right over the left side, right over Liam Meadey and Ray Rowe and Hines and those big guys. Marshall doing a nice job just taking it up the field. You know what's so nice about Marshall? He first starts inside the tackles. He hits you, he hits you, then he bounces to the outside for one of his patented big runs. The ball is in at the 49-yard line. First down and 10, San Diego State. They trail 3-0. A couple of wide receivers right. They're going to give it. Falk stutter step, but this time is hit by defensive end John Moran. He started inside. There was no hole, so he tried to step outside, but Moran had a pretty good collar on him, so it brings up a second down and 10 with 3 minutes and 11 seconds to go. San Diego State running that counter play. Their, their, their big size advantage is offensive line to the defensive line of Colorado State. They're small but quick. Sometimes quickness can stop that counter play. They don't have as good a success stopping the plays just right straight at them. Second down, we'll call it 11 from midfield. Falk the lone running back. Lowry gives it to him. Falk straight ahead, puts his head down, cracks for a couple, coming off the left side. Running behind Tony Nichols, and he fights his way down to about the 47-yard line of Colorado State with two and a half minutes to go here in the quarter. Falk was hurt four weeks ago. He has now gone over the 1,000-yard mark, officially 1,005 yards rushing on the season for Marshall Falk. What's nice to see is he's putting his head down and running hard, showing no side effects of that rib injury. Three wide receivers to the right. Third and seven Aztecs. Lowry, quick drop, looks right, pump fakes, looks, looks, gonna run. 45 to the 40, to the 35, gets out of bounds. In at the 33-yard line. Boy, what great coverage by Colorado State. What great scrambling ability by David Lowry. He gets 12 after standing back there about half an hour. David showing a lot of poise, wanting to go to Patrick Rowe on the right side. Can't see him, puts it down, puts it down. Can't find anybody. Sees the lane on the left side and just decides to take it. David again doing the second smart thing, getting out of bounds, avoiding the hit. When you're going to make a lot of throws, you don't want to take a lot of unnecessary hits to the shoulder. Three wide receivers to the right. First down and 10. It's in at the 33 of the Rams. They run it. Falk darts outside. Gets through one tackle. Won't get through the second one. And then gets gang tackled at the 36-yard line. And again, Marshall Falk trying to do some freelancing. But Colorado State getting to the football very, very effectively. This is a team, though, and this is surprising. Rams came into the game giving up 235 yards a game on the ground. They were ranked eight against the run in the WAC. And the Aztecs averaging over 216 yards. They figured that they'd be able to run the ball successfully. The Colorado State keying on Marshall early tonight. So Lowry may be looking at a passing play. He is. Second down. Bootleg left. Got a guy wide open, but he can't find him. Lowry backpedal to the 45. In trouble and gets hit and doubled over at the 40-yard line and fumbled the football. Lowry had Merton Harris open down at the five-yard line and never saw him. Harris was frantically running a route to an open seam, waving his hands, and David Lowry just never saw his wide receiver come open. Well, uh, Merton Harris looks like the only car at I-8 about 3.30 in the morning. I don't know how David missed him. Now, he got some pressure, but early Merton Harris running a deep out route was wide open. It's something I'm sure the Aztecs will come back to later on. David really should have picked him up and hit him, delivered, delivered the ball to him. It's only the 13th quarterback sack the Aztecs have allowed this year. Third and 17, back at the 40. Lowry to throw. The blitz comes. He gets hammered back at the 50-yard line. They had a blitz coming from the strong safety, Chauncey Sims, out of Denver. I'm not so sure Lowry ever saw him. He really wrapped him head high. Yeah. David never saw him. Marshall Falk, though, going to the left. His responsibility was to go to the right. Marshall going the wrong way on that play. David wasn't looking for him. He figured that they had him accounted for. Big play for the Rams. The Aztecs really start can't, can't afford to make those mental mistakes. Well, they got it in as far as the 34. Savorn to punt it away again. High, high kick. Carroll at the five's got it. Comes right to the 10 through a tackle and then gets dropped as he got it out to the 15. 45-yard punt. Nice punt by Jason Saborn. Pretty good coverage by San Diego State. We get to the end of the first quarter. We'll take a timeout at the end of the first quarter. Colorado State on a Mike Brown field goal. The Rams lead the Aztecs 3-0.
Brad Sussman here on the Aztec sideline. San Diego State trailing Colorado State 3-0 at the end of the first quarter. Aztec doctors have continued to check on Marshall Falk throughout the first quarter. Whenever the Aztec offense comes over to the sideline, they ask him if he's feeling okay, if the flak jacket is comfortable. At all times, he's nodded yes. Injury front Jim Jennings on the offensive line for the Aztecs took a forearm shiver to the throat. It stunned him, but he'll be all right. He's back out in the lineup. Lee? Thanks, Brad. We go to the second quarter. Colorado State has had the better of it, despite the fact San Diego State has had the better field position all night long. Ram football, first down and 10 from the 16. They're going to run the fullback straight ahead for a couple. They kind of ran an option off it. Gave it to the fullback straight ahead. And Hodge, who's another one of those Midwestern kids that Earl Bruce has recruited, gets him about two on the carry. Earl very successful at Iowa State, then at Ohio State before moving on to Colorado State. So he's got pipelines back in the Midwest. You can get those big, tough, inside running fullbacks. Hodge looks like another one. Hodge is from Zanesville, Ohio. Big kid. 6'2, 224 pounds and a fullback. Anthony Hill is in at quarterback now on a second down and eight. They run the option and Hill pays a price. He optioned left and did he get whacked by Daryl Lewis. I bet you he wishes he would have given the ball that time to Hodge. That, that he faked the ball to Hodge coming inside. Daryl Lewis just had responsibility okay. on Hill and just leveled him. Morse High to University High, the San Diego connection. Didn't work there. Hill is oh, awful. Right. Hill is awful lucky he didn't cough that ball up with that helmet tackle on his left arm where he was carrying the ball. Meanwhile, the offense is meeting down on the San Diego State bench trying to work out the kinks. They've not been able to move the ball. It's third down. Hill back to throw. Look. Air ball. Throws it up. Tips and knocked away. Great defensive play. John Lewis. Great defensive play as the ball was kind of just hung out there for Mark Holmes and Lewis. Time to hit to knock the ball away. It's a great play call for Colorado State. San Diego State getting caught in man-to-man -man coverage. But when you've got athletes like John Lewis, they'll start making plays. That time, John makes a tremendous play to avoid the completion. He's out there all by himself. Alan Glazer is on to punt, standing at his own five-yard line. Lots of time, high, high spiral. T.C. Wright's got it at the 40. Looking for running room ahead to the 45 and then gets tackled. So he gets a couple. 43-yard punt by Alan Glazer. And for the fourth time tonight, the Aztecs are going to start in great field position. We're going to take a timeout. San Diego State football. They'll go from their own 47. When we come back, Rams lead 3-0. 13 and a half minutes to go, second quarter. And the Aztecs, who are losing 3-0, are getting outgained despite the fact they've had all the field position all night. Yeah, it's surprising. Colorado State getting 80 of that 107 in the first drive, but San Diego State not getting anything at all. 107 to 28 total offense in the opening quarter. First down, they run Falk. Falk gets run over. Got back to the line of scrimmage, pushed ahead for maybe two, and then was dropped. Paul Gasser, 6'5", 240-pound senior defensive end, along with Otis Hamilton, inside linebacker, in to make the stop. Otis Hamilton active tonight. He's been on the stop a couple of times. San Diego State not able to get their running game in sync. <coughs> Maybe it's just a takes Marshall a quarter to get used to the offensive line and the timing again. Second down and nine at the 48. Lowry, one running back, gives it fall. Counter left side, gets it out to the 50, and then gets decked again by Gasser. Their defensive front at Colorado State is anchored inside by Mike Pagel. Defensive tackle out of Yuma, Arizona, who was a transfer from a Colorado Mines. And Steve Norton, who was a huge sophomore from Cincinnati. They're the inside tackles. The defensive ends are Gasser and Kevin Lynch. At Colorado State's always been known as a solid, sound football team. They may not have as good a speed as you'd like to see defensively. And as the game wears on, sometimes they're hurt by that fast. Third down and seven. The ball is right at the 50. Aztecs have got four wide receivers. Everybody into the pattern. Lowry to throw. Patrick Rowe drops it at the 30-yard line. Rowe was open, but what happened? He ran a streak pattern, stopped, and slipped. He had to try to get himself up, and as he got up, he might have lost sight of the ball and went right off his hands. Well, you call it exactly right. Patrick did slip. He was wide open. David put the ball. He dotted the one. 
That's still a catch that Patrick's got to make. He's got to get back up and focus the ball. Patrick's good enough to make that grab. Fourth straight possession. They don't get anything out of it after getting great field position again. Here's Savorn to punt. Short punt under rush. Hits at the 20 and bounces. Takes a great Aztec roll to the 10 and is going to be downed. What a great break. That ball went about 15 yards in the air and about 25 yards on a roll. And the ball is going to be downed at the seven yard line. They credit him a 43 yard bounce and roll punt. They don't say how, they say how many. <laughs> Just like bowling it right down the right side of that lane. It didn't look like, it was like one of those ever ready, ever ready batteries. Just kept going and going and going. So Colorado State leading 3 nothing, Sets up shop at their own seven yard line. And now the Aztecs defense, which is, has played pretty well, aside from the opening drive, is called on to get the ball back. And the battle of field position, I think, looms very important tonight. Verdugo is going to give it to Copeland, running left, out to the 15, to the 20, and driving people with him, gets it all the way out to the 22-yard line. Ryan Copeland gets 15 on the carry, coming off the left side. Just a basic play. It's the same play the Aztecs term their 35 zone. That time Colorado State did a nice job executing it. One thing that the San Diego State defense did not want to do is let Colorado State out of that hole. Now Colorado State's got some, some room to operate, can open up the offense a little bit. Boy, this does not look like a Rams football team that's lost its last three ball games and six of its last eight. First down and 10 from the 22. Send a man in motion to the right. That's Eric Olson. Verdugo to throw. Big pressure. He gets butchered all the way back at the 12-yard line. He stepped into the pocket to launch it, and he got knocked down. Lou Foster with a teeth-rattling tackle. Well, you got to tell me what Kevin Verdugo was looking at. And he must have great focus because Lou Foster comes in untouched and Kevin looks like he doesn't even see him. What a linebacker dream. You see you see a quarterback with their ribs exposed. That was just a, a tremendous hit that Verdugo took, bounced right up, and a big sack for Lou Foster and the Aztecs. Well, Aztecs came in with 34 sacks on the season. That's their 35th. Second down and 18. Here is the give to Copeland. Sweep right, 15. Fights his way out to the 20. Terrell Steen and Kobe Yellow finally twist him and drop him as he gets the ball out to the 20-yard line. So a Mike Brown field goal is the only scoring of this football game. For five minutes into the second quarter, it is 3-0 Colorado State. Earl Bruce, a year at Northern Iowa, nine years at Ohio State, six years at Iowa State, and one year at Tampa, said coach. Done a pretty good job in Fort Collins. And you think maybe some of the Buckeye fans want him back. <laughs> Third and 11 from the 21-yard line. Primus in motion. Here is a pass. Slant to Olsen. Got it. 25 ahead to the 27. And then gets knocked down hard. Damon Pieri and Terrell Steen hitting Eric Olsen. It's kind of like a, uh, it's almost like it's a slant screen, if you will. Lee, it's the wide receiver middle screen. Now, we saw Wyoming run that last week to Ryan Yarborough for 70 yards and a touchdown. San Diego State defensively stopping it this play. He got two pretty good blocks before Pierre, uh, Robert Griffith, and Terrell Steen got him. Here is the rush, and Glazer kicks a line drive. Hits at the 40, bounces away from T.C. right to the 30, to the 25. He fumbles it, and then he covers it at the 19-yard line. We're going to take a timeout on the field. Nine minutes, 45 seconds to go in the second quarter after a 44-yard punt. Colorado State leads San Diego State 3-0. Brad Sussman here on the Aztec sideline. San Diego State down 3 0. And here on the sideline, Aztec offensive coordinator Dave Lay just had a heated discussion to put it nicely with the offensive unit of the Aztecs. Thus far, they've been ineffective. He said, We've got to throw the ball to the right people. We've got to catch the ball. And we've got to block better. Mark Hall is familiar with Dave Lay when he gets upset. Mark? Exactly. Veins start popping out of his neck. Here's Lowry. He will throw it first down. Merton Harris will catch it out at the 42-yard line. A post pattern. 23-yard completion. Just like that, they've had guys open, but either Lowry hasn't gotten it there or the guys have dropped the ball. Well, Brad said Dave Lay's got the, got, got the solution. Hey, you got to throw it to the right guy, when, and you got to catch it when it's thrown to you, and you got to block. 
It, it seems like it's pretty simple when you execute it, just like they did there. First down and 10, and the ball's out at the 42-yard line of San Diego State. Lowry, back pedals, draw play, Falk straight ahead, 45, dances to the 50, sidestepping people, dives into the 48-yard line, and just like that, the Aztecs rip off 10 more on the Marshall Falk run. <laughs> we'll see now if they can continue that. The, 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 the personality of the Aztec offense is to make a couple of big plays and then hit the off switch. They've got to keep this intensity and tenacity. Patrick Rowe goes left. Harris comes to the right. Second and one, 49. They give it straight ahead. Falk got the first down. Crosses the 45 down to about the 44-yard line. And right now, they're just trying to punish Colorado State. Falk has gone over the 1,000-yard mark. He's got 36 yards rushing tonight. The ball sits in at the 44-yard line of CSU with the Aztecs trailing 3-0. And Carson Lee immediately that time just rolled over Steve Norton, allowing Marshall that lane on the left side. Darnay Scott goes left. Rowe comes right. Falk the running back. Lowry at the 44-yard line. They'll run it. Falk comes left. Big hole. Dances to the 40-yard line and then gets nailed. Huge hole off the left side, but the secondary got there pretty quickly to prevent him from breaking off a big run. Falk, of course, started the season with that 386-yard explosion against Pacific. As he goes to the sidelines to talk to the coaching staff at 212 yards in Hawaii and 153 before he got hurt against New Mexico. He does it against seven or eight-man lines. Defense is key on Marshall. Wayne Pittman is in at running back. It's second down and six for the 40-yard line of Colorado State. Lowry's calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. Lowry to throw. Looks right, throws right. Rose got it. Rowe threw one tackle, but they're going to rule he's down. They rule his knee touched in at the 33-yard line. Seven-yard completion to Patrick Rowe. And I think that's his first catch of the uh, evening. Yeah, they went to him, I think, on the first play, Lee, so that's his second grab. Seems like they should go to him more, though. The Aztecs need to challenge Colorado State defensive backs deep down the field. Colorado State's getting away with putting way too many people to stop the run, not the pass. Balls at the 33, first down and 10. Pittman remains in the game as a running back. Lowry deep drop to throw, looks long, throw it deep. Patrick Rowe got it, touchdown Aztecs. 34 yard touchdown pass to Patrick Rowe. All you gotta do is throw the ball to the right guy. When the right guy's there, he's gotta catch it, and you gotta block for him. Executed to perfection that time. David just letting Patrick run deep. Colorado State, they've been trying to stop the run, stop the short pass. That time, Patrick running a simple post pattern, beating Selwyn Jones to the post. David putting the ball right on the number. That was a great drive for the Aztecs. They needed that at that juncture. Well, he is their best defensive back, Selwyn Jones, 15 career interceptions. And Rowe was wide open. Patrick had to wait for that ball as Lowry kind of hung it up there. We had a penalty on sportsmanlike conduct against San Diego State after the touchdown catch. I think they'll enforce that on the kickoff, which will really hurt San Diego State because it'll put them back into bad, or give Colorado State good field position. They'll have to kick off 15 yards for five from the 20-yard line. It's really going to hurt them. Six plays, 81 yards on the drive. Now they're discussing the options with the Colorado State captains. Lee, they, they gave us an unsportsmanlike. I'm not sure that wasn't a demonstration, which is only a five-yard penalty, so it won't hurt the Aztecs as bad as an unsportsmanlike conduct would. We'll see when they mark it off, because they do it at the kickoff, what they call San Diego State that time, six plays, 81 yards. Only took them a minute and 10 seconds. Burton Harris with a big 23-yard catch to start it. Patrick Rowe with a bigger 34-yard catch to end it. Tenth touchdown pass of the season for David Lowry. On comes Trackus to attempt the point after. Out of the Larry Maxey hole. So the Aztecs who struggled finally get on the board. It's down, the kick is up. It splits the upright. So we will take a timeout on the field with seven and a half minutes to go here in the first half. David Lowry is at Patrick Rowe with a 34-yard touchdown pass. Timeout on the field. Aztecs lead the Rams 7-3.
Sports, San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium with the Aztecs up 7-3. And head coach Al Luganville throughout this entire week has been saying that his ball club has not played well at home, and it's been a big concern of his throughout the entire regular season. He wanted them to get off to a quick start tonight. They struggled in the first quarter, but after the touchdown, he turned to the people on the sidelines and said, let's get on a roll now. Lee? Brad, they're going to have to work hard now to get on a roll. They're kicking off from the 20-yard line after the unsportsmanlike penalty. There's the kick. It's fielded by the up back at the 32. He runs out to the 40-yard line and then gets hit and gets dropped. Tom Romero, the fullback, fielded the short kick. So the Aztecs on a six-play, 81-yard drive. They really staggered. And they hit Colorado State on the series with three big plays. The pass to Harris, the false run, the touchdown pass to Patrick Rowe. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification from Baja to the Canadian Rockies up and down the West Coast. This is Aztecs football. Lee Hamilton, Mark Holder back here at the stadium on a first down. Verdugo wants to throw, steps up, throws, and the tight end, Mark Smith, as the ball knocked out of his hands, he was double teamed. Damon Pieri was in deep coverage there. Strange play by Verdugo because it, it looked like it was going to be some sort of an option as he stepped to the right and there was traffic around him and yet he got rid of the ball. He had to duck up underneath Andy Coviello coming to the outside linebacker. Blitz had to deliver the ball early, but San Diego State doing a good job reading Colorado State's playbook. Anytime you have two defenders covering one receiver, chances are you're going to make the play as was the case there second down and 10 for verdugo he's 6'3 210 pound senior out of pittsburgh a transfer from the university of kansas second and 10 at the 40. primus in motion they give the ball copeland fumbles it as recover it at the 37. copeland coughed it up and terrell steen lightning's having a great season for the red and black attack comes up with a loose pigskin. He's having a fantastic season that time. It was just a poor exchange between Copeland and Verdugo. Now, it's Verdugo's responsibility as a quarterback to put the ball in the breadbasket for the running back. That time, I think Copeland used his eyes to read where the defense was going and forgot about taking the ball. Big break for San Diego State. Aztecs have the ball in at the 38-yard line. Turnovers have been the nightmare story for Earl Bruce's team. They have 28 turnovers on the season now. They're a minus 19 in the turnover ratio. So David Lowry and company, after the Aztecs pick up their second turnover recovery of the night, have the football in at the 38. 7-3, San Diego State leads. Lowry with one running back. Lowry, off play action. Steps into the pocket, guns it out to Falk. Through a tackle, 35-30, kicks it into gear and gets it down to the 27-yard line. Boy, he stepped around a tackle and made big yardage out of what should have been about a five-yard play. And we got a Rams player shaken up where Terrell Steen is having a fine season for San Diego State, seemingly getting better and better and better as the season has worn on. He's always been playing well, but sometimes teams have been double-teaming Terrell so Andy Coviello getting the sacks. When you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, he makes the big plays and finds the football. And it looks like Paul Gasser is the injured ram on the field. Coming to the sideline, looks like his right arm is dropping. I'm sure he'll be checked out on the sideline to see what that injury is. So Lowry's starting to really pick up some momentum throwing the football. Seven of nine for 83 yards. Dave doing a good job that time, wanted to go deep to Patrick Rowe dumped it out to Marshall one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. It's a great place to put the football. 11-yard gain. First down and 10. The ball's in at the 27. They run it. Falk straight ahead, stepping over tacklers, but he won't get over this pile as they knock him down. Coming up from the secondary, Bob Stratman, the strong safety, in to make the hit along with Otis Hamilton, the inside linebacker. So it'll bring up a third down for, or I should say a second down, for San Diego State with six and a half minutes to go in the first half, and it's 7-3. Aztecs lead the Rams. Interesting, too. That play looked like it was stopped for no gain, but it was a three-yard gain for Marshall. Seems like when he gets three or four yards, it's not as impressive because we're used to seeing him break the big ones. Line of scrimmage, Colorado State 25. Here comes uh, four coming right, 25, 20 to the 15, to the 10, and he's knocked out of bounds at the six. Marshall falls. 
England right. San Diego State did a great job sealing off blocks. Ball rips off 18. They credit Carson Leonidi and uh, and Joe Hines for for leading Marshall, but also credit Merton Harris and Darnay Scott down the field for making some big screen blocks, allowing Marshall when he gets into the secondary to pick and choose his lanes. The ball is in at the Colorado State six. Falk, I think, trying to find himself first quarter, has really found himself in the second quarter. Six minutes, ten seconds to go. Aztecs have the ball at the six-yard line of Colorado State. It's seven to three, San Diego State. They're trying to add more to that. Rowe and Harris split left. They're going to run it. Inside handoff. Falk is hit at the line of scrimmage and dives down to the two. Somebody got a hand on him around the ankle, and yet he stepped out of that tackle and dove it down to the two. And Marshall's very focused. In fact, so focused that the Aztecs have given him the ball the last four plays. He's really running hard now, lowering his shoulders, getting close to the goal line, smelling that end zone, doing the things that have gotten him all these yardages. Second and goal, the ball's at the two. Two tight ends, they give it. Falk, left side, spins left out of a tackle, gets down to the one. Not much running room that time. Wayne Pittman had lined up as an H-back. Kind of stepped into the hole, but got stood up, and there wasn't much room for Falk. So now the Aztecs are looking at a third down and goal, and the ball's just outside the one. Five and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Colorado State led 3-0. San Diego State came back on their last possession on a Lowry to Patrick Rowe touchdown pass to take the lead at 7-3. Aztecs Lee haven't had a rushing touchdown the last two weeks. Third down. They're going to throw it. Lowry backpedals, throws wide open in the end zone. Touchdown San Diego State as he gunned it to Ziegler. Wide open on the back of the end zone. And Mark Ziegler waiting seemed like for an eternity. That time was a great fake to Marshall. Let the defense collapse. Marshall does a nice job blocking. David Lowry throwing to Ziegler. Ziegler kind of did a little volleyball catch. He, they threw it to him. He set it up in the air and caught it in the breadbasket. He was wide open. David did a nice job finding him. So San Diego State has scored two touchdowns in a span of about two and a half minutes. Here is Trackus on to attempt the point after. It's down. It's up. And the kick is good. So the clock stops with four minutes and 58 seconds to go here in the second quarter. We will take a timeout on the field. Aztecs lead the Rams by the score, 14 to three. Andy Trackis kicks off. Colorado State will bring it out to the five, to the 10. Here is the return man, Primus, gets it all the way out to the 20, and then he gets gang tackled. So Colorado State trailing now 14 to three after having led up until the middle of the second quarter. The Aztec offense and that touchdown pass to Mark Ziegler looks like they finally kicked this thing back into gear. Football fans talk football with San Diego State coach Al Luganbill every Tuesday night. It's talk to the Aztecs at 730. Find out what's going on with the Aztecs. Find out what's going on with the WAC and what's happening in college football. Talk to the Aztecs every Tuesday night at 7.30 on Sports Night on the Mighty 690 Southern California Sports Radio. New quarterback back in. Anthony Hill wants to throw on first down. Steps back, throws, and the ball is incomplete. Anthony Hill, the freshman replacing Kevin Verdugo. He really looks tentative throwing the football. We have a penalty flag way back, and we got a roughing the passer penalty against San Diego State after the play. Aztec scored on a six-play, 38-yard drive, all fueled by Terrell Steen's fumble recovery and, of course, the Ziegler touchdown pass, but now the Aztecs come back and give him 15 yards on what should have been an incompletion. You really can't afford to do that defensively, too. Hill throwing off of his back foot, throwing the ball actually complete to Ed Schmidt, one of the Aztec coaches on the sideline, and then you give him 15 yards for roughing penalties. I've really kept Colorado State as well as other Aztec opponents in this ballgame. So the ball comes out to the 35-yard line after the personal foul. Anthony Hill, who's a scrambler and a runner rather than a passer, has replaced Kevin Verdugo. And they've got the old full house backfield with double tight ends working for him. 
Here is the give to Copeland on a counter. Coming right, 35 to the 40. Copeland gets run out of bounds as he gets it out to the 42-yard line. Let's get down to the sidelines. Here's Brad Sussman. Lee joining us here on the sidelines, former Aztec quarterback Dan McGuire, now with the Seattle Seahawks, number one draft pick. First of all, good to be back, and impressions of what you've seen out in the football field tonight. Well, it's great to be back, first of all, and it's great to see uh, the Murph really packed, and then uh, it's great to see the Aztecs doing well right now, and uh, offensively they're slow at first, but now they're coming back and putting points on the board. Tell us a little bit about Seattle and the experience in the NFL for you. Well, it's a great experience. I'm sitting back right now and I'm learning. Uh, it's a great learning experience. Uh, we're winning right now. We're 5-4. and four. We're over the hump and uh, playing the Chargers tomorrow. It looks pretty good for us. Another question. I saw you speaking to David Lowry after the touchdown pass to Patrick Rowe. What do you think of this play and what would you tell him? I just asked him what, what play it was and see if I were to remember the play from last year, and I sure do. And uh, uh, you know, ho hopefully they can go to it more often tonight. Good to see you here on the sidelines. All right, Brad. Stan McGuire joining us here on the Aztec sidelines. Lee? Thank you, Brad. Dan's on scholarship this year. Dan, Dan, Dan is uh, sitting wearing the baseball cap, carrying the clipboard, and observing on scholarship. But, but as compared to last year when that scholarship check was about $285 a month, he drives the, the, the Mercedes to pick it up now instead of having to drive the moped across campus. Colorado State ran the ball with Copeland on that last carry, got the football out to about the 46-yard line. Three minutes and 53 seconds to go. In the first half, it's 14 to three. Anthony Hill remains in there with three running backs. Option gives it to the fullback straight ahead. He gets a couple. Steve Hodge gets it out to about the 48-yard line. Hodge is out of Zanesville, Ohio. He is one of seven Midwest players out of Ohio and Illinois that Earl Bruce has convinced to come play in the Western Athletic Conference. Hodge was a, a kid that was recruited by the Big Ten, sat out a year as a Prop 48 kid, has come back in his plan as a true freshman this year. Yeah, good talent athletes follow good talent coaches wherever they end up. Second down and eight. Ball out at the 47. Hill, option left. Hill spins out of a tackle and gets to the uh, midfield stripe and then gets drilled by Lou Foster. So he picks up about three. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Hey, Aztecs almost playing a goal line defense. You know, Colorado State has two tight ends, three running backs in the backfield. It's the old full house backfield, almost a goal line offense out in the middle of the field. San Diego State defensive coaches Barry Lamb and his staff doing a nice job adjusting, committing to the run. The dangerous thing is if a running back fake breaks past that five yard cushion, he can go a long ways. They look at a third down, third and six for Colorado State. Hill is going to throw it under pressure, scrambles to the right. Throws, receiver comes back for the ball, and he can't get it incomplete. Hill was running for his life. Daryl Lewis with the coverage on the receiver up the far sidelines. Aztecs had a big blitz coming on Anthony Hill, and he had all he could do to avoid the blitz, much less find a receiver. Fourth, fourth time that the Aztecs have run what they termed the barrel blitz. Lou Foster just looping and coming straight up the middle, putting pressure. He's had success all night tonight on that blitz. Lou Foster, Terrell Steen, making Hill throw the ball early, but Daryl Lewis compared to Robert Griffith, did not locate the ball, or well, that would have been an interception. Alan Glazer to kick it away, short kick, end over end, T.C. Wright watches it bounce to the five, rolls to the one, and they don't cover it. Colorado State let it roll to the end zone. The ball took a sideways roll, was sitting there at the, about the one yard line, and the Rams just didn't cover the football. The Aztecs get a break, and the ball's going to come out to the 20-yard line after a 50-yard Allen Glazer kick. So it'll be first down and 10 for San Diego State with 2.17 to go here in the first half. Yeah, it's amazing. We've seen three of the ugliest punch you'll ever want to see all be very successful, each one over 45 yards. So the Aztecs have scored the last two times they've had the football. Let's see if they can do something here to at least get into Trakas' field goal range. Three wide receivers. Lowry, draw play. Here comes Paul, 20, 25 to the 30, and gets knocked out of bounds. Boy, he looks like he's about a step away from kicking it into that extra gear and going the distance. Yeah, no question about it. Again, Marshall now feeling the timing, reading the blocks, letting his blockers you know, make their blocks, and then exploding. This is a nice play to start a two-minute drive out with. A draw play, Colorado State expecting San Diego State to throw the ball, get the ball to Marshall. Get him out there in the open field. He can make big things happen, and they can make them happen quickly. First down and 10. 11-yard gain for Marshall Falk, and he's starting to put some no big numbers on the board. Football out at the 31. 
Three wide receivers. Falk goes in motion. Lowry with everybody into the pattern. Quarterback draw, but this time it doesn't work. He is stuffed and dropped as he tried to run it up the middle. Ran right into the inside linebacker, Brian Schneider. So now the Aztecs are going to take a timeout to stop the clock. It'll be a loss of a yard for David Lowry. David was expecting Brian Schneider to follow Marshall Falk. No one did. He's taught to throw the ball. It's a great play for Colorado State stopping the quarterback draw. Well, the Aztecs lead 14 to 3 in the big story next Saturday night. Showdown for first place in the Western Athletic Conference. San Diego State versus Brigham Young at stake first place at stake. The Holiday Bowl berth. We hope you'll join us. We hope to have, what do they call that? SRO, standing room only for the Aztecs versus the Cougars. And of course, the kickoff has been moved back to 7.35. We'll be on the air with our playbook show on the mighty 690 Southern California Sports Radio at 7 p.m. Spoke to Vicki Larson earlier this afternoon. She's indicated that 50,000 seats have already been reserved and accounted for. It's going to be a huge crowd suggest you make your reservations early this one was going to be a sellout you can call 283 SDSU for tickets next Saturday night the great chase for first place concludes in the Western Athletic Conference the Aztecs against Brigham Young and when you come to the game the two most important things ticket in your left hand transistor radio in your right hand second and 11 from the 30 yard line Lowry to throw with a blitz dumps it over the middle it's caught but I think the receiver is going to be thrown for a loss Lowry was trying to throw that middle screen, and I don't think Darnay Scott ever had any room to run. I'm sorry, it was Merton Harris on that uh, middle screen. Colorado State did a good job covering it. And the one thing you need to do to set up this middle screen is drop a little bit deeper and allow the Colorado State defensive front to come through. Now, that was a great call, except that when Merton caught the ball, he was closer to the eight Colorado State defensive guys than he was to his, his five offensive line and to block for him. Well, the big problem was Lowry had no time because of the pass rush. Third and 13, and the ball's back at the 28. Lowry, deep drop, looks left, fires, receiver, Patrick Rowe, great catch at the 50, into the 47-yard line. He had a defensive back in, in front of him, and I think might have screened him, and Patrick Rowe managed to find the ball through the defensive back and popped out of his hands. He grabbed it, 27-yard Reception by Patrick Rowe. Again, they don't say how, they say how many. Selwyn Jones coming in with 15 career interceptions. He gets one more. He's Colorado State's all-time leading interceptor. They don't come any easier than that. Patrick, though, good concentration, keeping his eye on the football, keeping focused, catching the ball, and then turning it up the field. So the ball is in at the 46-yard line. The mighty 690 will be broadcasting live from the San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium parking lot, F1. November 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. That's next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for Thanksgiving on the Mayflower. We will try to fill a Mayflower moving van with canned goods and food to give to the needy. All donations will be given to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. We hope you'll be with us starting next Thursday morning when Dan and Bob Butt, the Butt Brothers, broadcast their morning show on the Mighty 690. And if you're coming to the Aztecs game next Saturday night against BYU or the Chargers game next Sunday against the New Orleans Saints, bring a bag of goods as we spend Thanksgiving on the Mayflower to help the needy next week here at the stadium. First down and 10, the ball at the 46. Lowry will throw, looks, fires, sideline, pass to Rowe, knocked down incomplete. Nice coverage by Selwyn Jones, staying with Patrick Rowe. And as Rowe made his turn, Jones went with him. As Rowe looked back, Jones looked back, and then knocked the ball away. I think Patrick actually had a step and a half on him. David deciding to throw the ball on a line instead of laying it up deep and letting Patrick run under it. Selwyn Jones, good coverage on the play. So it goes incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. The ball's at the 46 with a minute five to go till halftime. Aztecs lead 14-3. Three wide receivers to the right with one running back. Lowry to throw. Out pattern. Caught at the 40. Here comes Maxey into the 33-yard uh, line. Larry Maxey on an out pattern wide open. He catches it. More importantly, he gets out of bounds. 
stops the clock with 59 seconds to go, and the Aztecs, after that 13-yard completion, have gotten themselves into position to get into Andy Trakas's range. On that play, the Aztecs catching Colorado State in a blitz. Kevin Lynch coming from his outside linebacker spot. Man-to-man -man coverage. David doing a nice check down to Larry Maxey on an out route. And Larry, the intelligent thing, get out of bounds, stop the clock, and save your timeouts. Darnay Scott goes left. Patrick Rowe goes left. Tate goes to the left. They're going to run a draw. Here comes Falk. Stutter step. Goes right to the 30. Gets pushed out of bounds. As he got it into about the 27-yard line. Did not find a big seam. And when he had to cut outside, that pursuit caught up with him. So the ball is in at the 27. It'll be a gain of 6. 53 seconds to go. But the clock stops again as he goes out of bounds. It'd be interesting to get a shot of some of these defensive players. That time, Sylvester Mabry. Get a shot of his eyes as Marshall comes untouched and you're one-on-one -on -one trying to stop him. Three wide receivers left. Falk the running back. Second and four. Lowry backpedals to throw. Looking left, fires. Sideline pass incomplete. Had to throw it a long way. He was at the near side hash mark and threw it to the far sidelines to Larry Maxey, and that ball kind of sailed on him. Not bad coverage that time by Chauncey Sims. I think David, rather than risking an interception in the flat, if you're late with the ball out in an out route or a flat route, and the defender picks it off, he goes for a touchdown. David just thinking, well, I'm going to toss that ball. If Larry can't catch it, no one will. We'll come back and try to get him on third down. Colorado State has not been able to get a lot of turnovers this year. Had only three interceptions and six fumble recoveries coming into the game. Third and four in at the 27-yard line. Aztecs lead 14-3, going for more. Lowry back to throw on third down. Dumps it out, caught by Falk, and a screen dances into the 25-yard line. There was just too much traffic for him to catch the ball and try to cut back against the grain. So he gets it down to the 25 with a half minute to go till halftime. And the Aztecs are looking at a fourth down, and they will bring the field goal unit on. Credit Steve Norton for Colorado State that time, reading the screen as a defensive lineman going with Marshall. Seems that ever Marshall goes tonight, there's one, two, or three Colorado State defenders go right with him. Now the officials step in, and Colorado State has called a timeout. So the Rams are going to let Andy Trakis think about it for a minute with 15 six to go on the clock here till halftime give me your feeling on this Lee. It's, it's it's analogous to icing the shooter in basketball do you think it has any effect on Andy or do you think he just kicks and whacks it anyway well I think Andy Trakis has kicked so many field goals in the last two years he's seven of ten this season I think that Andy is the pressure is beyond him I don't think it bothers Andy Trakis whatsoever the amazing thing is how much improvement the Aztecs have made in the point after department after that absolutely horrible start including that so critically costly miss point after the Air Force Academy. Yeah, it's not so critical anymore, though. Thank goodness for that, as far as Aztec fans are concerned. The only three field goals Andy's missed, 45-52, and was it 56 or 59 or 50? 50, 59. Uh, okay, there you go. 59 last week that he tried. So really, only two legitimate long-distance field goals that Andy's missed. He's been very successful, very accurate. There's a man that's successful, Val Luganbill. He's got his team where he wanted them to be, deciding their own destiny the final two weeks of the season. As Andy Traka steps up again, gets ready to snap the ball, Colorado State takes another timeout. So that stops the clock with 15 seconds to go, and now Traka goes to the sidelines to talk to the coaching staff. Get an opportunity, get a sneak preview of San Diego State's basketball team this coming Monday night at Peterson Gym when the Aztecs will host the Latvian National Olympic team. Your opportunity to see the big transfer from the University of Arizona, Tony Clark, San Diego State's outstanding front line, led by the homegrown star, Joe McNall, and an outstanding young junior college transfer, Virgil Smith, from New York. Aztecs versus the Latvian national team, the exhibition game, Monday night at 8 o'clock, Peterson Gym on campus. And, of course, that will lead to San Diego State's opening to the season on Friday night, the 22nd at the Sports Arena, Aztecs versus the University of San Diego Terreros. And, of course, you can hear Aztec basketball all year long on the Mighty 690 Southern California Sports Radio. Track is now ready to attempt a 44-yard field goal from the far side hash mark. Out of the Larry Maxey hold. He's 7 of 10 on field goals. The snap. It's down. On the way. It's up. It is no good. Off to the right. 
So Trackett missed, but didn't miss by much on a 44-yard field goal, and there's 11 seconds to go till halftime. Mark, you wanted to add something? Yeah, it was a good move by the Special Forces coach, Eric Arapastathis. Called Andy Trackett over the sideline after that second timeout by Colorado State just to get him into the same rhythm. Now, it didn't work, but instead of standing him out on the field for three or four minutes, he brought him to the sideline, brought him back out. Andy doing a good job from the left hash. Now, they've narrowed the goalposts down. Looked like he pushed it ever so slightly to the right. Well, they waited and waited and waited to see if it would drop, and Andy didn't get the, uh, the hook that he wanted. But he's been pretty doggone consistent most of the year. Colorado State football from the 25-yard line with a penalty flag. Here is Verdugo under pressure, and he throws the ball away. We're going to get a penalty, I think, against the Aztecs offside. Verdugo had a free play. Ramondo Stallings with a rush knocked him down. So I think Ramondo was the one that was offside. <laughs> they ended up in getting the pressure to Verdugo. So they'll march this one off. Verdugo is a transfer from the University of Kansas. He started as a freshman at KU and then transferred to Colorado State when the coaching change was made and Glenn Mason came on board. Native of Pittsburgh. He has a fairly athletic brother also, doesn't he? First down and five, and the ball's at the 31-yard line after the offside. This will be the final play. Well, you know a guy's name we haven't called all night? Greg Primus, their star wide receiver. They're going to run the football with a fullback straight ahead, and that will be the final play of the first half. As we wait for San Diego State coach Al Luganville to join us down on the sidelines. It has been a struggle, but the Aztecs finally weather the storm we get to halftime san diego state leading 14 to 3 here's brad sessman al your ball club goes up by 11 points into the locker room but i'm sure you're not totally pleased with the effort here in the first half well we got our, our offense got going in the second quarter there and uh we're gonna move the ball the second half coming right out and i uh i can't say enough for our defense right now they've kept us in the football game and colorado state came out with some new things and we adjusted well and we just got to go in and play every snap like it's our last snap the second half because this is for all the money. Marshall Falk looked a bit tentative at the start, but then he came on strong towards the end. I'm not sure we were blocking anybody at the start either, so I, I don't know. But he's he's starting to come back, and we'll get Wayne Pittman some turns in the second half. What are you going to tell your team here at halftime? Play lights out every snap. Uh, this football team, they're going to play their tail off. We're going to have to play our tail off. we got to win this sucker, Brad, some way, somehow. That's that head football coach Al Luganville joining us here on the sidelines. Lee will have more as halftime continues. Thanks, Brad. 14 to 3. The Aztecs lead the Colorado State Rams. Our halftime festivities from San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium continue after we take this timeout. Lee along with the quarterback, Mark Alda, back here at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. The Aztec lead the Colorado State Rams 14 to 3, Mark in a game that's really been two very, very different football games. The first half belonged to the Rams, first half, I should say, of the first half, and then the second quarter pretty much dominated by San Diego State. Statistically, Colorado State marched it all over the place in the first couple of possessions. San Diego State, last two drives, really doing a job mixing run and pass. No question about the balance that the Aztecs have been noted for all season long in that second quarter came about Basically, the result of two Colorado State turnovers. And interesting, Colorado State 5 for 12 passing at the half, but the first drive, Verdugo was 3 of 4. So the Aztecs have really shut down the Colorado State passing game from the middle of the first quarter on, shut down their running game from the middle of the first quarter on. The defense is what's kept San Diego State in this football game. All right, individual statistics very briefly for San Diego State. David Lowry, after a, a troubled start, 12 of 16 throwing it for 124 yards. Meanwhile, Verdugo, 5 of 10 uh, for 76 yards. Marshall Falk struggled early running it. He's got 18 carries for 81 yards at the half. Meanwhile, Colorado State's Brian Copeland, who ran it well early, hasn't run it much since then, 11 carries for 51 yards. Pass reception department, Patrick Rowe leads the Aztecs four catches, 70 yards, and Holmes three catches, 59 yards for CSU. That's the halftime summary with the Aztecs leading 14 to three. We'll be back with more after this timeout.
Lee Hamilton and the quarterback Mark Alder along with Brad Sessman back here at the stadium. We're at halftime. Aztecs lead the Rams 14 to 3. Colorado State dominated the first quarter. They only got a field goal to show for it on the board. Mike Brown kicked a 21 yard field goal uh, early in the first quarter to give Colorado State the lead by the score of 3 0, capping that 11 play 80 yard drive. The Aztecs retaliated with seven and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. David Lowry, six plays, 81 yards, capped it off with a 34-yard touchdown pass to an open Patrick Rowe in the end zone to give San Diego State a 7-3 lead. He hit some big plays in that series. Merton Harris had a 23-yard reception. Marshall Falk ripped off a 10-yard run on that six-play, 81-yard drive that resulted in the Rowe touchdown. Then, with just under five minutes to go in the second quarter, the Aztecs scored again by virtue of a Terrell Steen fumble recovery in at the CSU 38-yard line. San Diego State put a couple of big plays back-to-back. -back. Marshall Falk ran uh, for 18 yards. It was an 11-yard reception, and then Lowry threw a touchdown pass to a backup tight end Mark Ziegler in the back of the end zone to give San Diego State the lead. So after their offense sputtered so very badly through the first quarter and into the middle of the second quarter, Aztecs come back and score two touchdowns in about two and a half minutes. That touchdown pass to Ziegler capping off a six-play 38-yard drive. Of course, the Steen fumble recovery was the critical part of that drive. So the Aztecs lead by the score of 14 to 3 and more importantly Mark Holder they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. That's going to be a big boost for San Diego State offensively it seemed like they really turned it up a notch got it into gear they were running throwing the ball effectively to end the first half see if they can maintain that momentum here in the second half and nothing gets you started like a big special teams return Darnay Scott one of the best in the WAC one of the best in the country at that. So Colorado State to kick it off. Peter Renzau to boot it away for the Aztecs. Darnay Scott is standing back at his own goal line. We go to the third quarter. San Diego State, 14-3 lead and two quarters away from the game against BYU. Here is Scott ahead to the 15, to the 20, to the 30 through a tackle and dives out to the 34-yard line. So Darnay Scott gets him 24 on that kickoff return. Harlan Carroll in to make the tackle. So David Lowry and company will operate from about the 34-yard line of San Diego State. The bowl picture got a little bit foggier this afternoon. Why? Because Stanford upset UCLA. That puts Stanford in the running for possibly the Freedom Bowl. And the one that doesn't survive San Diego State's BYU game next weekend may be going to the Freedom Bowl. Here is first down, a handoff right side. Pittman crosses the 35 and goes ahead to about the... 37-yard line. Freedom Bowl officials are here. Copper Bowl officials are here. They both would like the Aztecs if the Aztecs don't beat Brigham Young. Aztecs' first priority would be to play here in December in the Holiday Bowl. Yeah, the motto being there's no place like home. Why not stay here play in the Holiday Bowl in December? Second down and six. Ball is at the 37-yard line. Pittman was in for just a couple of snaps in the first half. Gets the handoff, comes off the left side, but does not get very much. Pittman is coming off three tremendously impressive games. Yeah. And we need to give credit to Wayne Pittman, too. A reason San Diego State's been able to put together this winning streak is because he's come in, run hard all three games, averaged 150 yards a game, picked up the slack when need be. It's nice to see him having some success. Ray Rowe comes back in at tight end. Ray Chow comes out. Aztecs have got three wide receivers. Third down and four from their own 39-yard line. Everybody into the pattern. Lowry looks. Lowry throws incomplete. Bounce pass. Lowry was under pressure and about to get hit as he tried to hit Falk coming out of the backfield. Pretty good pressure by Colorado State's pass rush, and the Aztecs waste a possession. Yeah, unfortunate there. Colorado State coming with a, with, with a four-man rush. Nobody picking up Marshall. David a little bit late coming to him. Steve Norton, the one applying the pressure to David Lowry. David needs to recognize that, hit Marshall quickly out of the backfield before the pressure gets to him and allow Marshall to do what he does best, run with the ball in the open field. Harlan Carroll from Poway is back to return the punt, standing back at his own 20-yard line. Here is Saborn, who's hammered a couple of big ones. They got a fake on. They snap it to the up man, runs to the 40, and he doesn't get it. They snapped it to Damon Pieri on a fake punt. Pieri, the up man, stepped through the hole, but got out to the 40 and got tripped. 
and San Diego State with a monumental gamble, and it does not work. And Colorado State is going to get the ball at the 41-yard line. Lee, I don't think anyone associated with college football expected San Diego State to fake, which probably means it's a good time to fake. That decision is made on Wednesday night. San Diego State obviously saw something Colorado State did with a 10-man front, thought they could get by it. Damon almost had a big play, was just tripped up. That's a guts-up call. The ball at the 41. They run it. Here comes Copeland. 40, 30, down to the 25 and into the 24-yard line on a counter to Brian Copeland. So Colorado State tailback rips off 17 on the carry interesting to see to the Colorado State going with Anthony Hill the freshman from University High School in San Diego over Kevin Verdugo it's tough to, to, to stay consistent when you switch quarterbacks that position being a key to consistency we'll see how Hill performs here in the second half first down and 10 the ball is in at the 24 yard line two running backs are going to run Copeland counter coming left but this time Copeland runs right into Lou Foster and gets dropped as he gets it into the 24-yard line. No game. So Colorado State will be looking at a second down and about 10. Pope, 5'9", 195 senior at a security Colorado. 67 yards running in the first half, and we got an Aztec hurt. Well, Andy Coviello looks like he hurt his shoulder. Seems like every other game we see uh, Andy, known as General Hospital, limping to the sidelines. I'll reserve judgment on it because he always seems to come back a play or two later. He looks like, though, he is in pain. Greg Primus goes to the right. Holmes comes to the left. Hill lines him up in an eye formation. Options. Goes right. Runs to the 20, to the 15, down to the 10. Hill to the 5, to the goal line. Touchdown, Colorado State. Anthony Hill, 23-yard option for a touchdown, and the Rams are right back into the football game. That's a counter off. What, what Anthony Hill does is fakes to the fullback over the left side. They pull the left guard. He leads Anthony Hill around the right. Anthony showing his athletic ability. He's the runner, not the thrower, showing why old Bruce has confidence in him to lead this offense. San Diego State getting caught in a defense that wasn't ready for the option. Damon Pierre not able to make the play. John Lewis tied up. Brennan Anthony Hill, that's a tremendous run for a redshirt freshman. So the Rams, by virtue of stopping the fake punt, get the ball, get a touchdown out of it. Mike Brown to attempt the point after. It's down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. With 12 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, Colorado State has come right back. Aztecs lead 14 to 10. Right here in the stadium. 12 and a half minutes to go after Colorado State goes three plays, 41 yards, and scores on a touchdown run by freshman quarterback Anthony Hill to climb back into this football game. 14 to 10, the Aztecs lead, and all this, of course, was fueled by the fourth down fake punt run by Damon Pieri that didn't get the first down. So they kick it off. Darnay Scott on a short kickoff at the 8 to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Goes to the 30. Gets a uh, block. Runs to the 40. Breaks to the 50. Penalty flags all over the field. He's going to go all the way for a 92-yard touchdown. But I think they're going to bring it back. They had penalty flags all over the joint. We had a penalty flag at the 30. We had another one thrown out at about the 35. Coming from different angles, different officials, different parts of the field. Bring that one back. Yeah, I think it was called at the same spot. Last kickoff return, Thomas Romero, a special teams player for Colorado State, looked like he was clipped. This time, looked like he was called for being clipped. Uh, that's devastating, taking away a big special teams advantage for San Diego State. Darnay Scott showing you why they got him back there. He finds the seam. Boy, when he accelerates, he just explodes. Unfortunate, did not look like he needed a clip at all for that run back. He took a seam, a lane. The clip obviously was made for it wouldn't even affect the return. Uh, that's a tough, tough break for the Aztecs. I think there were two clips. I think there was one at the 15 on the far side hash mark, and then there was the one that didn't affect him as he had already gone through the seam. But now the Aztecs got to gather themselves. They've been hit with a, a touchdown run. They've just had a 92-yard kickoff return taken away. Aztecs with five penalties on the night. Rams have only four. So they're going to have to steady themselves with a 14-10 lead. 
Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification from Baja to the Canadian Rockies up and down the West Coast. This is Aztecs football. <clears throat> Lee Hamilton along with the quarterback Mark Ald and Brad Sussmat back here at the stadium. Line of scrimmage is the 14-yard line. First down and 10 for San Diego State. Lowry gives it to Falk. Straight ahead, fights his way for a couple of tough ones, and we get another penalty flag in the pile. He got it out to the 18, but I got to feel this one's coming back. Let's get down to the Aztec sideline. We'll get an update now from Brad Sessman. We'll get that to you in just a minute. Stay with us. Holding the call in the pile as they ran that counter and he came back Lee Amidi was stretching the jersey of the uh, inside tackle Steve Norton so the penalty brings it back all the way inside the 10 yard line but again we see the Aztecs making critical mistakes this time by penalties cost them a kickoff now costing a field position well, that song it don't come easy applies here doesn't it Patrick Rowe goes left, Keith Williams comes right. It is first and 16, and it's back at the eight. Lowry's gonna throw from the goal line. Steps up, throws over the middle, almost intercepted. Boy, he threw into double coverage, and Keith Williams did not have a prayer of catch in that. Let's get down to the sidelines now. Here's Brad Sussman. Lee, multiple injury updates with the Aztecs. Andy Coviello is having his right shoulder examined. They're not sure how severe it is. They're putting some ice on him. He has his pads off. He's here right in front of me. Lou Foster, Gary Taylor also been battling the cramps throughout tonight's game in their legs. They're continuing to stretch out here in the sidelines, but they're in a lot of pain. San Diego State's looking at a second and 16 after Harlan Carroll nearly intercepted a pass. Lowry, drop play, runs it, falls, stutter step, comes right, runs to the 10, spins out of a tackle, and gets to about the 14-yard line. Monday Night Football is something special. From the mighty 690 Southern California Sports Radio, join us for our new Monday Night Football parties, where all the football fans in town go. The Padres Pub at the Doubletree Hotel in Mission Valley. Join Mr. Monday Night Football, Chet Forty. Monday Night Football parties at their best at the Doubletree. Padres Pub in Mission Valley. And I'm sure they have more monitors than he had in his production truck also. You got that right. Third down and 10 of the balls at the 14-yard line. Trips left. Lowry with a blitz coming. Throws. Caught. Dropped. Knocked away. They had a blitz coming. He threw it to Maxi out at the 25. Had it. Got hit. Popped up. Had it again, dropped it. Yeah, Harlan Carroll also had it. Fortunate for the Aztecs, that wasn't intercepted. They've been doing a good job in the teeth of the blitz, standing, delivering the football. Larry does what you're not supposed to do as a receiver, let the ball come into your pads. You need to catch it with your hands to avoid that hard plastic shoulder pad popping the ball out, as was the case there. Harlan Carroll is standing back at the 50-yard line. Savorn to boot it away. Kicks a line drive. Carroll on the run, has got it, goes to the 45, cuts inside, we get penalties as he gets it to the 43-yard line. This could be a major penalty against San Diego, I should say against Colorado State. 36-yard line drive punt. We got an Aztec player down on the far sidelines. He was running from the bench onto the field and went down. So I think that's Eric Duncan. He was a player clipped. Tom Romero, who was who was clipped the previous return, that time did the clipping on Eric Duncan. And he and, and, and as he was running off toward the sideline, looked like something popped in the back of his leg. I'm not sure if that's a result of the clip or a result of being pushed or a strain. Boy, what a big mistake. What a big mistake for Colorado State. Takes him in, out of field position. We'll take a timeout. 11 minutes to go, third quarter. As 11 minutes, 14 seconds to go in the third quarter, and momentum has shifted to the Colorado State Rams. The football will be, though, at their own 38 after a terrible clipping call. Instead of starting at the Aztec 43, they'll start at their own 38 because of the clip on the punt. Mark Holmes comes in motion to the right. Anthony Hill remains in at quarterback. He will option left. He gets drilled. Boy, he started left, was going to pitch it to Copeland. He should have pitched it to Copeland. And Andy Cobiello, bandages and all, smacked him. 
<laughs> Andy Coviello is unbelievable. Credit his tandem with Daryl Lewis. Andy Coviello pursuing from the back side. Daryl Lewis hits him front. Andy wraps him up back. A big hit. Lucky Anthony again holding on to that football, doing a good job hanging on to it in a fierce hit. But I can't believe Andy Coviello. Lipping off, coming back on, playing harder than when he left. Football, 38, no gain, second down and 10. Aztecs got a six-man front. They're going to run Hill. Option to Copeland. Copeland gets hit at 40, crosses out to the 42-yard line and gets shoved into his own bench area. Damon Pieri, along with Chris Johnson, coming up with the uh, tackle. Interesting, again, that Colorado State would run the option into the sideline as compared to the wide side of the field. The Aztecs using the sideline as an extra defender, helping him with a stop. Third and six for the Rams. 14 to 10, San Diego State leads here midway through the third quarter. It is unbelievable Greg Primus has not been part of this football game. Their leading receiver had 59 catches coming into the game. They're going to option it. Hill in traffic. Where'd he go? He went down. Greg Hill on an option right. But San Diego State has just beaten the Rams off the football now. Hill got lost in a sea of black uniforms. Barry Lamb and his defensive staff say, if you're going to run the option, we're going to send Blitz. You let our defensive secondary make big plays. Credit Chris Johnson that time was slowing downhill. Lou Foster making the final stop. They're just saying, we're not going to let you beat us with the run and the option. Alan Glaze, fifth punt of the night. End over end, line drive. T.C. Wright's got it, 25. Cuts inside, 30, 35, and then gets tripped and dropped right there. So the football belongs to San Diego State. They'll operate from the 35-yard line, first down and 10 for the Aztecs with under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. San Diego State leads 14 to 10. So in this exchange of field position, Earl Bruce's team hasn't been able to take it to the next level. You would have thought that with that punt return, they would have started at the 43, but they weren't able to capitalize it. T.C. Wright juking and jiving his way through that... Uh, of white jerseys get San Diego State good field position. Yeah, nice, he runs north and south, gets you as many yards as he can. Lowry will throw. He throws it out to the 40-yard line on first down. Patrick Rowe is gang tackled immediately. So they get about five on that play. Don't forget, we have San Diego Chargers football. Tomorrow, Chargers come home to meet the Seattle Seahawks. Hear the broadcast on the Body 690 Southern California Sports Radio. Our tailgate talk show with Brad Sussman, Jim Laswick starts at 10 a.m. Countdown to kickoff will be at 11 a.m. All the play-by-play -play at 1 o'clock. Chargers Seahawks tomorrow. Second and five, line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line of San Diego State. Lowry going to run a draw. Here comes Falk. Penalty flag. Falk runs to the 50 and dives into the 46 of the Rams, but they're going to bring it back again. And suddenly, the plays they ran so successfully in the second quarter they have not been able to execute here in the third quarter what's that the third major holding call yeah interesting two san diego state will go a period two or three games without a hold and all of a sudden get flagged two or three in one game now this is not the crew that usually gets them i think they're done with those guys for the year the san diego state doing a doing something you're not supposed to do i think they're going to get judd rachel for holding on the outside linebacker Boy, that's difficult because Marshall doing a good job running that draw play. So the ball comes back to the 28-yard line of SDSU. Second down and 17 now. 14 to 10, San Diego State leads. Lowry's got three wide receivers with Falk going in motion left. Everybody into the pattern. Lowry back to throw in the pocket. Throws over the middle incomplete. Tried to get a diving Tate who could not hang on to it at the 38-yard line. And this kind of looks like the first quarter where the Aztecs just could not get anything going in terms of rhythm. And anytime you do make a big play now, they're penalizing themselves three, by holding two. penalties. Looked like that time they wanted to get the ball to Ray Road down the middle. Colorado State doing a good job walling them off. And David doing a nice job coming back underneath. Play third and 17 are tough downs to complete. Three wide receivers with one running back. Lowry to throw. They got a blitz coming. They pick it up. Lowry looking long. Throws incomplete. Threw it to Maxi. Maxi was covered. Patrick Rowe had single coverage down the sideline, but Lowry did not throw in his direction. And the Aztecs will give the football up, and we may have a quarterback change coming on the next possession by the Rams because Verdugo has been warming up for the last four or five minutes. So it may well be they'll go back to the passing attack in place of the option. Here comes Saborn back on to punt. 
Jason's been busy tonight. Sixth punt of the night. Here's the snap. Gets it away. It's a very short kick. It's going to hit at the 40. Carroll lets it bounce away from him. Going to roll into the 35-yard line. And that is where Colorado State will operate from. Let me remind you that the mighty 690 Southern California Sports Radio will be broadcasting live from San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. It's Thanksgiving on the Mayflower, November 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. That'll be next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to try to fill a Mayflower moving van with food, goods, and clothing and blankets. We will donate everything that we put in that moving van to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. You're coming to the Aztecs game next Saturday against BYU. The Chargers games next Sunday with New Orleans. Bring some Thanksgiving goodies to give to the needy. Part of our Phil the Mayflower moving band promotion. Here is the quarterback back to throw. Sideline pattern incomplete. As he tried to kill, who was still in there at quarterback, tried a long pass out to the 45-yard line. Falls incomplete, and it's second down and 10. I think you got to credit Eric Sutton, too. We haven't called Greg Primus at all. Eric Sutton in for Gary Taylor. Gary's groin may be bothering him again, doing a good job stymieing Primus. We'll go down to Brad Sussman after this next play. Second down and 10. The ball's at the 35-yard line. Anthony Hill brings him to the line of scrimmage. Split the backs, give it to Copeland, running right, turns the corner, puts his head down, and gets a couple, and that's all he gets. Crosses the 35 ahead to the 37-yard line. Let's get down to the uh, sidelines for Brad Sussman. Lee, the Aztec sideline really has been in shock, and they're kind of spinning their wheels ever since the fake punt went awry earlier in this quarter. This little Aztec linebacker, Andy Coviello, who injured his shoulder a bit earlier, has now gone to the locker room. Trainer Brian Berry tells me it's nothing serious. They're just going to examine him, but he has been in there for a good five minutes. Barry thought he wouldn't miss one defensive series, but so far he's not back out on the football field. We'll keep you up to date. Okay, Brad, we'll keep you up to date here. Penalty in the pile after the play, and it's against Colorado State. So this thing, which is fairly fast moving first half, is kind of grinded to a halt. Yeah, right now there's some penalties. Interesting, too. Chad Provisol in for Coviello. Doing a nice job that last play, stifling the run. Second down at 18, and the ball's back at the 27-yard line. One running back. They send Mark Holmes in motion to the left. Anthony Hill going to option at left. Quarterback option runs to the 30, 35, and dives ahead to the 37-yard line. That was almost like a quarterback draw off an option, Mark. He started left. Might have taken two or three steps. The next thing you know, he was heading downfield. <laughs> it's interesting, too. Instead of giving the ball to the back on the draw, he'll just follow him up the hole. Uh, he ducked inside Terrell Steen. There really isn't an Aztec to account for Hill until he gets the free safety, Damon Pieri. Damon doing a nice job wrapping him up, preventing an even bigger game. Colorado State's looking at a third down. Verdugo is in at quarterback now in place of Anthony Hill on a third down. It's a strange rotation of quarterbacks we've seen tonight. Third and 10, they got a blitz coming. He throws, caught by Holmes out at the 40. He is short of the first down. They ran a route underneath. They let the uh, deep man clear out, and Holmes delayed coming underneath. They had a blitz coming, and Verdugo read the blitz and hit Holmes underneath, but he is short of the first down by about a yard, and CSU is going to have to give the football up. That little wide receiver, middle screen against San State, doing a good job not being fooled. Alan Glazer on to boot it away. Sails it to T.C. Wright. Got it 25 to the 30. Spun around and then gang tackled right there. So San Diego State will operate from the 30-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Aztecs. Six minutes and 49 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And it's a 14-10 game. And right now, the Aztec lead, but it's really become a game of a battle of field position. Well, next Saturday night... The great chase for first place in the Western Athletic Conference wraps up. Ty Detmer, the Heisman Trophy winner of a year ago, comes to town with Brigham Young. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock with our Aztec Playbook Show, all the play-by-play -play at 7.30. First down, Lowry to throw off play action. Looking long, throw it deep. Patrick Rowe can't get an incomplete penalty flag pass interference. Patrick Rowe was looking back, and I think one of the CSU players might have had him around the neck. 
The official who was closest to the play didn't throw the flag. The official trailing the play, who might have had a better look at it, is the one. Boy, what great play faking by David Lowry. And he showed his arm straight, too, just airing the ball out, giving Patrick Rowe enough time to run underneath it. He could have probably given it a little more, but the back judge had his back to the play, didn't make the call. The side judge was the one that saw. Yeah, Patrick Rowe was mugged, but again, Lee, this ball's thrown 40, 45, 50 yards downfield. Selwyn Jones with the interference. The Aztecs only get 15 yards. Uh, you got to tell me why. Uh, that penalizes again the offense. I mean, you can you can mug Patrick at the 20, and the Aztecs get the ball at the 45. Your arithmetic wasn't very good. I knew there was one course you didn't do well in. He threw it from the 20 to the 20. What's that? 60 yards. That's 60 yards, isn't it? That ball was in the air, 60 yards. Here's the give. Here comes Ball, scooting through the hole, 50, and bangs down to the 45-yard line. They ran a counter to Marshall Falk, and Falk gets it into the 45 of Colorado State. That's pretty good, 60 yards in the air. That day's got good arm strength. What I liked about that is San Diego State attacking Colorado State deep. Even if you don't complete the deep ball, you get them back on their heels with the threat that you will throw it at any time. When you get the ball to Patrick Rowe one-on-one, -on -one, he can make those big plays and turn the game around for you. First down and 10 in at the Ram 45-yard line. Lowry will throw, five-step drop, throws, caught in at the 35-yard line, and a tight end dragging people all the way down to the 30, and he's still on his feet, still going, and they finally blow the play down at the 33. Guess who? What a load. Boy, we've been waiting for Ray Rowe to get the ball for a couple of weeks now after that huge game he had at Utah. He's a great target to go to. I guess San Diego State's just got so many weapons, it's tough for to get the ball to Ray, and he's such a great blocker. That time, David doing a good job getting it to Ray Rowe. Well, I tell you what, half, of, half the state of Colorado looked like he was on Ray and still couldn't bring him down. Otis Hamilton had him, but it took four other guys to bring him down. 15-yard reception by the tight end Ray Rowe. First down, here is the give, Falk, running right, 30, 25, hit, turn sideways, and dropped in at the 23. So Falk gets six on the carry, and suddenly the momentum's gone back to the red and black attack with under six minutes to go in the third quarter and San Diego State leading 14 to 10. You can see a new surge of enthusiasm throughout the Aztec offense. They probably shook off whatever they were thinking about that fake punt. That's in the past. You've got to make your future, you know, see your future, be your future, make your future. San Diego State right now doing a great job coming off the ball. They look a little quicker than Colorado State. You've been reading Norman Vincent Peel. Second and four. Lowry to throw. Sideline pattern incomplete. Throws it away from Patrick Rowe at the first down marker. So it will be third down Aztecs. And the football is in at the 23-yard line. 14 to 10, San Diego State. A tough play call here for Dave Lay and his staff. On the count of three. Marshall Falk now over 100 yards with that last carry, but a tough play call here. They've had success using David Lowry on a little bootleg or even a quarterback draw to get big yardage in big situations. Ray Rowe is a tight end to the left. They're going to throw it. They got a blitz coming. He throws over the middle, caught at the five-yard line and down to the two. As he caught him at a blitz and he dumped it over the middle to Will Tate at the five-yard line. Lowry saw a safety blitz coming right over the middle, and he looped it over the middle, throwing off the back foot. And David looked like he wanted to go to Darnay Scott on a hitch route. Darnay wasn't ready to, to, to receive the ball. So David coming over the middle, over the top of that safety blitz. Aztecs have been waiting for Will Tate to make a big play. That time he combined with David Lowry to do so. 22-yard reception. Pittman and Falk line up in the backfield. The counter. Here is Pittman coming left. Gets cut down as he got it back to the line of scrimmage. Pretty good surge by Colorado State. Brandon Ward out of Dallas, Texas. First guy across the line of scrimmage. So the clock continues to run, and they're back at the two. We got a player down on the field. We got a Rams player that is hurt. One of the guys from their secondary coming up to make the stop. So the clock will stop with four minutes and 41 seconds to go here in the third period. San Diego State leading Colorado State by the score of 14 to 10, but the Aztecs have now put themselves into a situation where they can possibly blow this game open. 
Aztec basketball get a sneak preview of Jim Brandenburg's 91-92 basketball team Monday night when San Diego State hosts the Latvian national team at Peterson Gym at 6 p.m. Your opportunity to see the flashy new point guard from New York City, Virgil Smith. Of course, the big kid out of Chula Vista, Joe McNall, Keith Balzer, Tony Clark, the transfer from the University of Arizona. San Diego State basketball sneak preview Monday night at Peterson Gym against the Latvian national team. They tip it off at 8 o'clock. They administer to the injured Colorado State player down on the goal line. Let's get down to the San Diego State sideline. Here's Brad Sussman. Lee update on Andy Coviello. The linebackers come back out onto the field. He says he'll be back out in action. Of course, Coviello second in the Western Athletic Conference in sacks. Also, a new unofficial record set on the Aztec sideline when Ray Rowe was dragging Rams players. The uh, Aztec assistants counted nine Rams being dragged down the sideline. We are told that is a new unofficial record. Lee? Thanks, Brad. Boy, Selwyn Jones really looks like he's hurt. He got hit by one of his own linemen. He was in on the tackle as he was, Pittman was dragging him towards the two. He got hit from the side. We're going to take a timeout. 14-10, San Diego State leads. Stay with us. Just under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. They have helped Selwyn Jones off the field, and he looks as if he has a very bad injury to his left knee or his left leg. He got hit by his own lineman from a very bad angle as he was going down. And that's a shame. He's out of Missouri City, Texas, as a senior cornerback, career interception leader. Second and goal from the two. They're going to run it to Falk off the right side, and Falk is snowed under and dropped. Paul Glazer, who's played a great game at defensive end in that group to make the tackle on Marshall Falk. So the Aztecs are looking at a third down in inches. Louisiana Lightning over the century mark for the game. Probably in and around 105 yards rushing now. San Diego State looks at a third and one. With four minutes to go in the third quarter. There's some fierce hitting going on on the goal line right now. An offensive line that wants to surge, a defensive line that doesn't want to be pushed back. Quarterback sneak, Lowry diving, got it, touchdown. San Diego State, David Lowry was stuck it across the goal line. The one thing David Lowry knows, knows who to follow, that's Kevin Macon and Carson Lee Amini just goes right over the top of those guys. Interesting, too, you get up there, you go on a quick count, you try to catch defense. Uh, not ready for that quick quarterback sneak. They only needed to get about a half a yard, and David showing the strength of his legs is able to go up and into the end zone for the touchdown. So that also takes a little bit of offensive line discipline. You better get there, pal, and get set quick. No question about it. So Lowry with a quarterback sneak, giving the Aztecs the lead. Here is Trackus, point after. It's down, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. So with three minutes and 54 seconds to go here in the third quarter, San Diego State has jumped out to a 21 to 10 lead on the David Lowry quarterback sneak. Three minutes, 54 seconds to go third period and the Aztecs have regained the momentum. By the way, San Diego State's Hall of Fame athletic banquet coming up. And the fourth annual Aztec a Athletic Hall of Fame banquet takes place next Saturday, November 16th at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium prior to the Aztec BYU football game. Football players Monty Jackson, Tom Doms, basketball player Steve Kopp, now he was a great one. Golfer Chuck Courtney and volleyball All-American Angela Rock will be formally inducted into the hall. Make your reservations now to honor these great San Diego State athletes. Call the Aztec Athletic Foundation at 594-6444. Andy Trackus ready to kick off. Red and black attack. Leading 21 to 10 with three minutes and 54 seconds to go in the game. Waiting in the wings. Week from tonight, Brigham Young. High kick to the eight, to the 10, to the 15. Oh, what a hit. Holy cow. That brought everybody out of the seat. Open field hit by Chad Provensall. He took the head of Chauncey Sims off. What a shot. Yeah, yeah, Chauncey may need a necktie, and Chad was more than happy to oblige him. That's the hit of the week, hit of the month, maybe the hit of the year. He almost had a face mask, too, but he, he got him up high. Oh, my. Got him right under the chin strap. Boy, what a highlight film hit that's going to be for Chad Provensall. We'll get down to the sidelines in a minute. San Diego State on that Lowry touchdown. 
going seven plays, 65 yards. Back in at quarterback is Anthony Hill. First down. He wants to throw. He's under trouble. He looks. He throws out of bounds. Incomplete. He was under rush, and he just fired it up the far sidelines. Let's get down to the Aztec sideline. Here's Brad Sussman. Lee, injury update for the Aztecs. They will have to go the rest of tonight's ball game without Gary Taylor. The cornerback has re-injured that left groin, and when you think down the road against the passing attack of BYU next week, this could be a significant injury. Lee? Okay, Brad. Thank you. Second down and 10. Football sits at the 20-yard line. I don't understand what Colorado State is doing with the rotation at quarterback because they, they trail, and they got to throw the ball, and Hill is obviously not as accomplished as Verdugo. They think that he can make an athletic play not throwing the ball but, but scrambling and running the ball. San Diego State just blitzing out after Hill. He doesn't think he can sit back in the pocket against a blitz and hurt him. Second down and 10, and the clock runs out on the freshman quarterback at Colorado State. Did not get the play off. Seven plays, 65-yard drive by San Diego State on the last possession to give him an 11-point lead and a little bit of breathing room. No question about it. Defensively, Barry Lamb and his staff are blitzing Anthony Hill in a variety of different ways, confusing him. That's the way they're trying to stop Colorado State when Hill's a quarterback. Second down and 15, and the ball's back at the 15. Rams need a little bit of a drive here to gain some confidence and get themselves back into the game. Send a man in motion to the left. Hill under pressure. Looks, throws, wide open, and he drops it out at the 40-yard line. He had Eric Olsen wide open. Freshman, wide receiver from San Marcos, and he dropped it. That's the second drop of a pass in which he's been wide open. Yeah, my goodness, Anthony Hill, this time doing a good job in the teeth of the blitz. Delivering the ball perfectly. John Lewis beating on the play. Eric Olson taking his eye off the ball. I'm sure that's one that Eric wishes he had back. I'm sure John is happy that the laces maybe arrived not straight up, but to the side maybe caused that not to make that catch. But my goodness, that's a big break for San Diego State. So now it's third down and 15 with the football of the 15-yard line of the Rams. 21-10 Aztecs lead. He's going to run the option. Squirts through the hole and gets it out to about the 19, and that's about all he gets. So they're going to have to give the football up again. Yeah. Lee, and we're seeing Colorado State now in a grab bag situation. Anytime you alternate quarterbacks, I know you got one that's a better runner than a thrower and one that's a better throw and a runner. But play selection and consistency and continuity, Colorado State offensively has gone back into a shell. San Diego State defensively is really taking it to them. Glazer to punt the ball away. San Diego State going to go for the return. Very short kick. Hits at the 50. Bounces sideways. Goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. So the Aztecs are going to start with great field position after a 35-yard Glazer punt with just over three minutes to go in the game. And you wonder if the Aztecs will try to just pound the ball on them now, wear them down, and take them out of the game emotionally. Yeah, I think what they'll try to do the same thing as they did last series. They'll pound it with Marshall, pound it with Marshall, but as an offensive staff, if you see Colorado State with eight, nine guys in line of scrimmage, you've got to use your speed at wide receiver, the Darnay Scotts, uh, the Will Tates, the, the Patrick Rose, and beat them deep. San Diego State, you can't go in a shell now. It's only... It's still three minutes to go in the third quarter. A lot of football left to play. Lowry with two wide outs. Wants to throw. Looks left. Throwing deep. Trying to hit Darnay Scott on a home run bomb there. Got it. Touchdown. San Diego State. 53-yard bomb to Darnay Scott. That a way to go Aztec coaching staff. Listen to the listen to the extra radio guys up here. Just throw that thing deep. When you've got Darnay Scott, a tremendous athlete, with great speed, you've got David Lowry, who's got a cannon and throws a spiral every once in a while. Hey, take a shot. First down, Colorado State's not expecting it. They're expecting you to run the football. Darnay Scott doing a great job of concentration. David Lowry doing a fantastic job of just throwing the ball up to the atmosphere. Big play for San Diego State. Couldn't have come at a better time. All right, what a rainbow pass as he threw it deep. Sylvester Mabry's doing a pretty good job of covering. That's just a perfectly thrown pass to a tremendous athlete. Well, San Diego State has come back to score two touchdowns in a minute and three seconds here in the third quarter. And a close football game now suddenly is colored in red and black. And you've got Kevin Verdugo warming up again. Maybe Colorado State now goes to the throwing uh, portion of their offense. They had a penalty after the touchdown. I don't know whether it was personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct. 
Trackus will come on to attempt the point after. Aztecs lead 27 to 10. And they're on the brink of blowing this thing wide open with two minutes and 57 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Trackus converts. So the clock stops. It is now 28 to 10, San Diego State. Interesting to see. Maybe Brad can find out if Dan McGuire is giving any advice to David Lauer. This is the first game we've seen David really try to test him deep. And the one thing that made Dan so great is he threw a deep ball as good as any Aztec quarterback that ever played, as well as any quarterback ever played at the collegiate level. His touch on a deep bill, ball was tremendous, and he wasn't afraid to attack him. But maybe he instilled some of that into David to sideline this game. So the Aztecs have grabbed this game by the throat. They lead 28 to 10 with 2.57 to go in the third period. This was a game that Colorado State had climbed back in on after the fake fourth down run off a punt by Damon Pieri backfired in the Aztecs' face. And CSU promptly scored to cut the lead to 14 to 10. But the Aztecs have now taken control of this game. You know, leave it to get another unsportsmanlike conduct. Now, I'm not sure if that's a demonstration penalty or what, but that's a 15-yard penalty, and there's one guy that is not all too happy about getting those things at this critical time. Al Luganville walking up and down the sideline, shaking his head. Now, the Aztecs pay for it on Monday, too, the Monday after the game. As they're penalized, they do a lot of run, and Al tries to eliminate this. It hadn't worked so far, but Jiminy Cromedy, you can't keep getting all these penalty yards, especially against the Cougs next week. So eight penalties against the Aztecs, eight against the Rams. San Diego State now will have to kick the football off back at their own 20-yard line. Trakis hammers it to the 18-yard line. Back comes Colorado State. The 20 to the 30 out to the 40-yard line. And the return man is hit and dropped. That's Greg Primus. I don't understand, A, the rotation of Colorado State's quarterback, and we've not seen Primus at all as it relates to catch and passes. No question about it. You've got to go to Greg Primus. He's the leading receiver in the Western Athletic Conference. He had 59 catches for 942 yards and 16-yard per catch average. We've got an Aztec shaken up. I think Zach Stokes made the hit on that play on Primus, shook up around the shoulder area. Again, Greg P Primus, not only number one in the WAC leap, fifth in the nation. He hasn't seen the ball yet. Let's go down to the Aztec sideline. Here's Brad Sussman. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, two minutes, 51 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Zach Stokes is coming off under his own power. He made a nice low tackle, just took a thigh right in the shoulder area. Sometimes that's more of a jarring jolt than anything else. And once you can uh, determine which way's north, which way's south, you're okay. Lowry is 16 of 26 for 220 yards and three touchdowns. First down and 10. Verdugo to throw. Looks right, throws long. Great coverage by the Aztecs. Tipped and deflected away. They were trying to get it up the far sidelines to Mark Holmes. Stride for stride coverage. Provided by Robert Griffith. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Rams. If you're an Aztec fan, too, defensively, Lee, the Aztecs now are running white with the Colorado State receivers, not being fooled. It seems like they've got the patterns down. Now is where the Aztecs can really pin their ears back, and they're pretty good sack attack. They had 34 coming into the game. 40 was a goal for the year. They've really improved on that. Verdugo's going to run it on a draw. Gives it ahead to the tailback. Crosses the 45-yard line and gets it out to the 47. That's Brian Copeland. Let's get back downstairs to Brad Sussman. Well, of course, David Lowry out of tribute to Hills High and is starting to get some attention in the Orange County and L.A. areas. The paper's up there noticing that he's having a nice season for the Aztecs. Tonight, of course, he has three touchdown passes, touchdown run. And every time that he has a touchdown, throwing or running, he comes over to the sideline and points at his fraternity. All those fraternity members are here on the sideline. It's kind of a pointing session back and forth, letting them know that he appreciates their support. Lee? I hope he points at him a couple times next Saturday night. Third and five at the 48-yard line. Primus comes in motion. Penalty flag. They run Copeland right side. 50 and crashes into the San Diego State. 48-yard line. We got a procedure call. What do we got? Yeah, I think the man in motion, again, may have turned up before the snap of the ball. Getting back to Brad, though, uh, David Lowry, undefeated as a starter. I know it's young in his career, but there's only been only one other Aztec quarterback that 
in his career went through it undefeated. Only played eight games. Tom Kraft, coach of Palomar College, never lost a ball game. He had a lot of the same intangibles as David Lowry. Maybe not the greatest thrower, maybe not the greatest this or that, but put all his, you know, the makeup together, and he gets the Aztec team playing well, and David reminds me a lot of Tom with well, those qualities. Tom's done a great job at Palomar College, quarterback factory. Bring him in, get him ready, send him back out. In fact, he's got a Colorado State quarterback up there right now, Andy Loveland. Boy, and he is just ripping it up. I think Tom is basically mad that uh, he was never allowed to throw the ball very much. He's getting back as a coach. Third down and 10 after the procedure penalty against the Rams. The football is at the 43-yard line. Verdugo rolls left to throw, guns it to the 50. Nice catch by Mark Holmes, hit immediately. As Verdugo avoided the rush, fired it to the sidelines. John Lewis had a point warm up with the tackle. What's nice too, John Lewis keeping Mark Holmes from getting the first down. Earlier in the ball game, Marshall Falk didn't get to the first down stick. This time it's Mark Holmes didn't get to the first down stick before he made his out cut. You got a fourth and short situation. I'm sure you're going to go for it if you're Colorado State, but if you miss it, again, the Aztecs get great field position. This is a key down for both the Rams and the Aztecs. One minute to go, third quarter. Line of scrimmage is the San Diego State 48. It is fourth down and one. Verdugo's got three backs here as they give Copeland. Runs, got the first down, 45, 40. Threw a tackle and down to the 31-yard line. Brian Copeland needed one, and he got him 17. That's a danger playing that goal line short yardage defense. If the running back breaks containment, breaks out, gets through that initial line of defense, the next, the next person is a free safety. This reminded me of John Riggins in the Super Bowl when the Redskins put away the Dolphins. On a, on, on a similar play, that time Damon Pierre making the stop. The ball is in at the 31-yard line of San Diego State. No quit in Colorado State. Verdugo runs the fullback straight ahead for a couple as he handed off to Stevie Hodge, the kid from Ohio. You know, you look, talk about the chemistry of this roster. Earl Bruce has only five junior college players on the roster. I mean, that is exceptionally low when you consider virtually everybody in the WAC probably runs on the average of 15 to 18 JC players per year. It also means that when he recruits a guy out of high school that he pretty much predicts his ability and doesn't have to get to a JC to stop and fill the gap of someone who didn't perform. Verdugo to throw second and eight. Guns it, tipped, almost intercepted. Chris Johnson got his mitts up there. Almost came down with a pass on the deflection. So it will bring up a third down and eight. What is amazing to me, and, and obviously Copeland is a very good running back, as witnessed by the fact he had nearly 700 yards coming into this football game as, as Verdugo uh, you know, threw into coverage. But Verdugo has had some big games throwing the football. He threw for 315 versus Hawaii, 255 versus the Air Force, and 244 against Wyoming. And yet, he's rotating a quarterback. I'm not sure I understand the thinking of uh, on the Rams' sideline. Sometimes statistics don't translate into wins and losses, and that's what a quarterback's responsible for. Third and eight, and Verdugo throws it out of bounds as he was hit as he tried to throw the football. He was looking long, trying to throw it deep down at about the 10-yard line to Primus, but there was double coverage. He came back and tried to throw it to his tight end, Mark McKenzie, but just as he unloaded the ball, you get pop. Colorado State's had a pretty good tradition of quarterbacks. Kelly Stopper, number one draft pick in the NFL, currently with the Seattle Seahawks. Terry Nugent spent about seven years in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. Had a great little running back, Steve Bartallo, who's in the NFL with Tampa Bay for an extended period of time. And of course, way back. That's a great play. And, no, and, and who was the offensive coordinator during those years? Dave Lay, now with the Aztecs. Fourth down and eight from the 28-yard line of San Diego State. Olsen goes in motion. Verdugo to throw, good protection, throws, nice catch in at the 17-yard line. Olsen, who hasn't been able to hold on to the ball, the San Marcos freshman comes up with a beautiful catch in coverage. But he really did. He went up to about the eighth floor. The Aztecs got off at the mezzanine. Kevin Verdugo just sitting back there, fourth and eight. He might as well just chuck it. Olsen gets way up there. I didn't know he had the, the, that leaping ability in him tremendous hands we get to the end of the third quarter we are going to take a timeout Colorado State has the ball they have a first down they'll be on the move when we come back fourth quarter just around the corner Aztecs lead the Rams 28 to 10 
We go to the fourth quarter here at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. Lee Hamilton with the quarterback Mark Calder, Brad Sesmat, the ambulance chaser down on the sidelines. Aztecs lead 28 to 10, but Colorado State threatening to climb right back into this football game. Don't forget tomorrow, San Diego Chargers football against the Seattle Seahawks. Enjoy the game on the Mighty 690. Southern California Sports Radio will be on with the tailgate talk show at 10 a.m. The countdown to kickoff is at 11 a.m. All the play-by-play -play at 1 o'clock. And Lee, how's that week off help the Chargers? They're, they're better off, worse off? How do you view that? I don't know if it helped the coaches, the players, the broadcaster more. <laughs> San Diego will be home for five of the last seven games. First down and 10, Rams at the 17. Here comes a blitz. Swing pass dropped by Brian Copeland. Verdugo was under the gun. He had a blitz coming from the backside. Swing pass out to Copeland, and he could not hang on to it. So it brings up a second down and 10. Darrell Lewis comes from one side, Robert Griffin for the other. Perfect play to have on. A little swing pass to the running back, a little hot check down principle. Verdugo delivered a little bit low. Copeland couldn't hang on. And that's what happens when you face a blitzing defense. Sometimes you rush things. Your timing gets off a little bit. And then a time pass offense, your timing's off. You don't move the ball. Attendance, 30,163 here tonight at the stadium. Second and 10 from the 17. They're going to run it here as the end around. Eric Olson. Olson's going to run to the end zone. Touchdown, Colorado State. As they ran a reverse, Eric Olson goes 17 yards. And the freshman from San Marcos, kind of coming out of a either a wing back or a slot back position. Yeah, I tell you, it looks like the old Ed Burke wing T uh, inside reverse with Verdugo leading around the left. Last time I saw that, Torrey Pines ran it two Fridays ago for a big play. This time, Colorado State taking a play out of the old wing T formation. Verdugo handing it off. Then a little inside handoff on a reverse. Nice play caught the Aztecs reacting to that first play. That's tough, 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 tough play to stop for San Diego State's defense. So Colorado State's going for two. They're going to run it. Here is the quarterback diving to the goal line. They're going to give it to him. Yes, two-point conversion. Anthony Hill on an option right. Dove and put the ball, ball across the plane to the goal line. line. Timeout on the field, and they have come right back. San Diego State leads 28-18. Nine seconds into the fourth quarter, Colorado State's come back and scored on a 10-play, 57-yard drive and a 17-yard run by Eric Olson. And as the Rams kick off, Darrell Lewis catches the ball at the 30-yard line. So San Diego State will start first down and 10 from their own 30 with 14.47 to go in the football game. Eric Olson making a big catch on the fourth down. Brian Copeland had a big run on the fourth down, and then Olson caps it off with a touchdown run. Mark. Yeah, nice little reverse by Olson. That time, Colorado State doing a little sky kick, trying to catch the Aztecs off guard. Darrell Lewis, a smart thing, fair catching a kickoff. So David Lowry, they will run the ball on first down, gives it to Falk, spins out of a tackle, crosses the 35, and Marshall drives ahead to the 37. Report from the Colorado State locker room is terrible news. Selwyn Jones, their star cornerback, has a dislocated hip. Has gone to the locker room. Obviously, that's the end of the season for him. Of course, they finish their season next week at home in Fort Collins against New Mexico. Second and two, the ball's at the 38. Aztecs are going to run it. Here comes Falk, left side, crosses the 40, gets a couple of tough yards. Otis Hamilton, the inside linebacker, a junior out of Denver, in to make the stop. Oh boy, there'll be a lot of conversation in the next two weeks. Who's going where as the bowl picture? Instead of clearing, gets a bit cloudier. We talked about the fact UCLA was upset today by Stanford, so Stanford puts itself in a bid now for Freedom Bowl, maybe the Copper Bowl. Notre Dame getting knocked from the ranks of the teams are in the running for national championship spot as they let a big one get away. What a shocker as they lost. Here is the pitch to Pittman coming right. Cuts back left, gets a couple, and that's about all he gets. We'll give him one yard at best. Wayne Pittman started to sweep right, then cut back against the grain. 
Boy, a Tennessee comeback against Notre Dame. What a monumental comeback. Wow. Great comeback by the Tennessee Volunteers. That was one of the better football games I've had a chance to watch. Caught that earlier today, 35-34. And Stanford, Sendstrom, what a tremendous quarterback he is. It'd be a great matchup uh, if the state ends up playing Stanford in one of these bowl games. Second down and nine from the 43. Lowry will throw. The pocket collapses. He's going to scramble. Runs right. Got a guy open. Never saw him, and he got hit. And I think we got a penalty flag, too. We may have a flag on the far side. Let's see. Lee, if, we, if we don't have a flag, we should. Sylvester Mabry just assaulted Patrick Rowe. As David Lowry was scrambling to the right, Patrick Rowe did a smart thing. He tried to go by him. Maybe just grabbed Patrick, hauled him down to the ground. Now, David was tucking. I don't know if he would have been able to hit Patrick anyway. That was a definite hold, saving Patrick from running right by Mabry. Well, there was no penalty flag in the secondary. It's third down and 11 at the 41-yard line. Pittman goes in motion right. Everybody into the pattern. Quick pass underneath the Merton Harris through a tackle. Tries to cut left, goes to the sidelines, running a long way, and is going to get dropped. He got back to the line of scrimmage. They tried to run that screen down underneath, and then Merton Harris tried to come back left. The Colorado State pursuit of the football very well. So with 12 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the game, Aztecs are going to have to give it up again. The Colorado State and Verdugo are going to get it back again. It'll be fourth down and nine. Yeah, Aztecs hoping they could have done a little more with the ball offensively, keep the defense to give them a little more of a rest. I think State's defense again being put to the test. Boy, Savorn's been a busy guy tonight. On to boot it away. Big rush. He gets it away. Hacks it to the 25 and bounces sideways and is going to roll down to the 20, and the Aztecs are going to down it there. So San Diego State will get their defense back on the field. We're going to take a timeout on the field. 11 minutes, 48 seconds to go in the game. Rams have the football. First. Just under 12 minutes to go in the game. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification from Baja to the Canadian Rockies. Up and down the West Coast, this is Aztecs football. <laughs> Lee Hamilton along with the quarterback Mark Halder, Brad Sussman down on the sidelines. It seems like we've been here since Thursday. This second half has taken all week. What's what's the ETA for the end of the fourth quarter? When you play at home and you got a lead, that clock's supposed to run a little bit quicker, isn't it? <laughs> here is Verdugo, first down and 10. From his own 19-yard line, he sends Holmes in motion to the left. Verdugo's going to run the football. Here comes Copeland, crosses the 20 and gets a couple. He thought he could catch San Diego State and maybe a nickel or dime package and try to bust a big run with Copeland. Oh, Bruce, smart coach. He knows there's enough time to get his club back in this ball game. There's no sense in rush, you know, trying to force the action. And Colorado State's at their best when they have a balanced attack, much like the Aztecs. So they're not going to come out just chucking the ball all over the lot until it gets later on in the ball game and they're still behind by this much. Copeland's got 17 carries for 99 yards. Second down and six from the 23. Primus left, Holmes left. Now Holmes comes in motion. Copeland is the lone running back. Verdugo back to throw. Rolls left, throws left, caught. Out at the 30, ahead to the 35-yard line. Nice catch by Holmes. And we are still sitting here into the fourth quarter, and Greg Primus has not caught a pass tonight. Now, he may be hurt. Maybe he is a decoy, and that is all he is out there. They have not gone in his direction at all. Yeah, interesting holes with six catches for 86 yards. Primus nothing. You think he would be hurt, but again, he's returning kicks. So I'm wondering if he is indeed hurt or if the Aztecs are just doing a super job taking him away from the Colorado State offense. First and 10, it's out at the 35 of Colorado State. I formation. Verdugo fakes the handoff. Under pressure. Sacked. Got hit at the 21-yard line. We have a penalty flag way up the field. The tight end, Mark McKenzie, got into it in the secondary. We had a penalty flag after the quarterback sack. It's going to be interesting to see if they get Terrell Steen for holding on the tight end. I'm not so sure that's the case. Chris Johnson coming in, just bearing Verdugo along with Andy Coviello after the quarterback sack. Then the penalty flag was thrown. It's going to be interesting to see what the caucus is going to result in. Holding defense. That flag was awful late. 
But then again, the official wouldn't have seen the sack. He was watching what was going on in the secondary. That'll yeah. be the ninth penalty on the Aztecs. It's going to wipe the sack off the book, and it's going to give CSU a first down. Now the ball is going to go all the way out to the 45. The sack was all the way back inside the 20. Lee, that flag was awful late, but if you're a San Diego State fan, that flag was just plain awful. You can't afford to make mistakes like that. 25-yard change in field position in a close ball game, and now they bring in Anthony Hill. First down and 10 from the 45. Hill's going to run the option, pitch at the Copeland to the 50, down the sidelines into the San Diego State 45-yard line. So they go get 10 on the option to Brian Copeland. This Colorado State team has been struggling, however, you know, they haven't had a chance to win a ball game. You keep letting them into the ball game, keeping them close enough where they got a chance to pull it out, and they're going to start playing better and better. Copeland's a fine running back. Hill's a tremendous athlete. Verdugo, Verdugo can throw the football. Well, San Diego State's got to come up big with a big defensive series in order to keep Colorado State from gaining that momentum and staying in this football game, having a chance to pull it out. They'll bring the sticks in from the far side. What's the word I'm looking for? Colorado State's offense, a little schizophrenic. You never know what they're going to do. Yeah, I'll tell you, but that's probably the Aztecs' problem right now is you don't know what they're going to do. You know if Verdugo's in, they're going to throw, and you know if Hill's in, they're going to run, but you don't know where, how. And sometimes, as a defensive unit, you get adjusted to one guy, you bring in another guy, and it's difficult to react. And if Colorado State can continue to shuffle quarterbacks and not miss a beat, which is difficult to do offensively, it became, makes them very difficult to stop. So it will be a first down. The ball is in at the 45-yard line. Earl Bruce's club. There is no quit in this group. They've played really well. They've sputtered and spurted a couple times offensively, but they keep coming back. Ten minutes, 19 seconds to go in the game. It's 28-18 San Diego State, but this hasn't been easy. One running back. It's Hodge, the fullback. Verdugo is back in at quarterback. They will throw. Pump fake. Looks long. Wide open. Got a man open. Primus at the 20. Breaks a tackle to the 15 to the 10. And he's down at the 3. Verdugo on a pump fake throws everybody. A stop and go on a deep sideline pattern. And Primus kicked it into gear after the pump fake was wide open. 42-yard pass to Primus. This was just a great offensive play. Verdugo pumped like he was going to throw that little middle screen. The Aztecs just collapsed. Eric Sutton losing Primus. Primus doing a great job just getting behind him. Damon Pieri and Sutton finally combining to make the stop. But that's a tremendous play call. I've never seen that play run. You always see the middle screen, but I've never seen the pump and throw deep. Give credit to Earl Bruce and his staff. Three running backs first down. They give it inside. Hodge got it. Touchdown, Colorado State. Stevie Hodge punching in from the right side. And here come the Rams again. And it's 28-24 with just under 10 minutes to go in the game. Well, this is going to be interesting. Colorado State, they keep Verdugo on the field. They may go for two, not wanting to come out of here with a tie. A tie does them no good. But the, they may be playing the Aztecs' hands if San Diego State stops Colorado State. Now they're four up, and a field goal doesn't tie them and doesn't, doesn't beat them. you got a big defensive play right here. Rams are going for two. They're going to run the counter. Here comes the end around to the running back, and he's going to be hit and tossed out of bounds. They ran the end around to Eric Olson, and San Diego State snuffs it out. So we're going to take a timeout. Nine minutes, 51 seconds to go in the game. CSU fails on the two-point conversion. Kickoff coming up with the Aztecs leading 28. Nine minutes, 51 seconds to go. It's a brand new football game. It sounds like the third time I've said that tonight. Colorado State keeps coming back. Peter rents out, a booted off. Kicks it short at the 25-yard line. Here come the Aztecs. There goes Keith Williams down at the 33-yard line. Let's get down to the San Diego State sideline. Here's Brad Sesmet. Lee, obviously some frustrated people on the defensive side of the football, not only the players, but the coaches. Players coming off the field after that last drive by Colorado State. 
extremely upset and saying, hey, let's play to win. Let's, let's not give this ball game away. There's some heated discussions going on down here on the Aztec sideline. They need right now is a little bit of composure. Nine minutes, 51 seconds to go. Lowry will throw, looks left, throws. Merton Harris, nice catch in traffic out at the 40-yard line. What they need is a ball control drive. Colorado State, 10 plays, 57 yards. Scored on the 17-yard end-around run by Eric Olson. Just a big play there was the pass to Primus. Gain of seven on the completion to Merton Harris. I mean, the personality of this Aztec offense the past few weeks is when they've needed a big drive. They've been able to put one together. Interesting now to see if it can happen again tonight. Second and three at the 41 of the red and black. Lowry, counter, here comes the back through the hole, fall, 45, 50, sidesteps a tackle, streaks to the 40, down the sidelines to the 30, and knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Marshall Falk kicking it into gear, sidestepping people as he weaved his way through the initial surge, 36-yard run for Marshall Falk. Well, I, I think he put on a few moves that haven't even been invented yet that time. Marshall Falk just doing a great job again up through the tackles, bursting outside. Oh, man, he, he makes one Colorado State defender miss, picks up a nice little screen block from Patrick Rowe, turns it on down the sidelines, couldn't have come at a better time for San Diego State. Big run by the Aztecs, freshman running back. He's got 152 yards. He didn't do anything in the first quarter. First and 10. The ball is in at the 23-yard line. Play action. David Lowry looks left to throw, gets hit, rifles it, caught by Patrick Rowe at the 7-yard line. Boy, he was open. Lowry knew he was going to get tagged, and he hung right in there and made the play. Uh, yeah, great play call again, not going into a shell. This time you're going to fake the ball to Marshall Falk. Everybody, including everybody up here, thought that he was going to run the ball. David just throws a knuckler out to Patrick Rowe. With that catch, Patrick Rowe is 15 yards shy of becoming the all-time leading Aztec receiver. The ball is in at the seven-yard line. First down and seven. Back-to-back -back big plays. Thank you, Rowe and Falk. First and goal. One running back, they give it. Falk, nowhere to go. This time, hot tied and dropped back at the 12-yard line. Mike Pagel, the defensive tackle, that of Yuma, Arizona, transfer from Colorado Mines, along with Paul Gasser in to make the stop for CSU. So it'll be second down and 11. But the clock continues to roll. Eight minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the football game. Aztecs lead. It's been a struggle, 28-24. Lowry brings him to the line of scrimmage. Harris left, row right. Second and goal. The ball's at the 11. Play oh, action, so penalty good. flag, sack. All the way back at the 19-yard line. Colorado State rubbed that one out. And again, it was Pagel and Gasser. Those kids up front have really played well. Yeah, they had their pinning their ears back. And it seems like Colorado State's playing a guessing gambling defense, guessing on the run or guessing on the pass. That time, however, Colorado State may have been off sides, which enabled them to put pressure on David quickly. That is the call. So they'll march it five yards back in towards the goal. Eight minutes and 15 seconds to go in the football game. Offside CSU, and the ball comes into the six. But a penalty that time worked in San Diego State's favor. Five much needed yards. Now second and five, you can do a lot of things. You can run the ball, you can play action. You need a quarterback draw, you can throw a, a little fade in the end zone. Offensively, it's a lot easier second and, and five than and third, and, and third and ten. So they got three shots at the goal line. Pittman, the running back. Lowry to throw. Throws on the goal line. Caught. Touchdown. Patrick Rowe. He had to thread the needle in there and rifle it by Harlan Carroll to safety, and he got it there. Six-yard touchdown pass. Lowry to Patrick Rowe and the Aztecs. Get a little bit more breathing room. Yeah, they don't say how, they say how many, but I was I was sitting there wondering if that ball was ever going to get to Patrick. He just ran a little quick out on the goal line. A dangerous throw by David Lowry. Managed somehow to squeeze it in there. Patrick Rowe doing a nice job concentrating the ball as he went to his knees to make the catch. Big drive for San Diego State. So Trackers comes on to attempt the point after the snap. It's down. The kick is up, and that kick is good. 
So the clock stops with seven minutes and 53 seconds to go in the game. We're going to take a timeout. San Diego is bolted back out on top. Aztecs lead 35-24. Just under eight minutes to go on the football game, and San Diego State has gone back on top at 35-24. David Lowry is 20 for 30, throwing the ball for 251. Patrick Rowe has got seven for 98 yards, and Falk is at 148 yards rushing. Yeah, more importantly, David, six out of his last six for 90 yards in the score. Trackers kicks it short out to the eight, to the 10, to the 15. The return man comes all the way out. Primus gets it to the 25-yard line. So CSU with 7 minutes, 47 seconds to go. Patrick Rowe setting another record in an illustrious career. The Aztec star with another touchdown pass on the night. Nine more yards puts him as the all-time leading receiver, beating or er, uh, breaking Tim Delaney's mark. He just had a tremendous career at San Diego State. He'll follow with a tremendous NFL career. Right now, though, the Aztecs hurting themselves again, Lee face mask penalty on the return 15 yards additional for Colorado State given the ball in great field position Aztec scoring on a five play 66 yard drive the touchdown pass to Patrick Rowe the big play though in that drive was the 36 yard run by Marshall Falk streaking it down the sidelines streaking is a goal is, is aptly put he was just out racing everybody First down and 10 on the balls at the 41. Verdugo off play action, looking left, gets hit, throws incomplete. Receiver had turned and was open, but Verdugo really got cranked. And I think that stood the pass to go off to the far side. Well, he got smothered by Eric Dunk, and Eric Dunk running a little stunt, little game inside with the rest of his defensive linemen coming free, leveling Verdugo, making him throw the ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to do out to the, where it was incomplete, San Diego State. Second down and 10, the ball's at the 41-yard line. Verdugo having to throw the ball a lot. Here is the option coming right. Here comes Copeland, 45 to the 50, and gets into San Diego State territory. On the option right, getting it into the 48-yard line. And just when you think Verdugo's their thrower, they come out with the option. He's not the threat to run. But when he pitches the ball to Copeland, Copeland knows what to do. This play is designed to be pitched to Copeland all the way. Robert Griffith that time getting caught up inside. Brian did a nice job advancing the football. He's got over 100 yards tonight at 5'9", 195 pounds. It's a tough man to bring down. On the count of three, defense. First down and 10, and the ball is in at the 46-yard line after Copeland rips off 13 yards. Verdugo, line of scrimmage, San Diego State 46. Option, pitches it left. Here comes Copeland, 25, 40, 35. Get the block down to the 30, keeps going, and finally gets knocked out of bounds. Got it down to the 22-yard line. Boy, Copeland, back-to-back -back big runs of 13 and 24 yards. And Colorado State is on the brink of getting another score. And I think if you're San Diego State, you just take the outside linebacker, you run him to Copeland, and you make Verdugo run the football. Copeland, 20 carries now, 144 yards. Don't let him run with the football. Make Verdugo turn it up inside and then just tattoo him when he does so. San Diego State's defense has been in some leaks the last couple of weeks. Here is the hill, the quarterback wants to throw, guns it, caught by the tight end down at the two. Hill came off the bench on the play and hit Mark Smith down at the two-yard line. And here comes Colorado State. They're on the doorstep again. Now, if you're trying to guess Colorado State's plays, you got Verdugo running two options. He's the thrower. You put Hill in, and then he throws the pass to beat you. Colorado State doing a good job of changing up the offensive play calls, keeping San Diego State's defense off balance. The ball is in at the one. They line it with three running backs. Hill gives it. Copeland is submarined and dropped for a loss. Never got going. Bottom of the pile, Terrell Steen. When that last pass completion by Hill was his first. One for six for 23 yards, but if you're a Colorado State fan, that 23 yards is monumental. Couldn't have come at a better time. Six minutes, 45 seconds to go in the game. 35-24, San Diego State knocking at the door. 
three running backs. Here is Hill given to the fullback, Stevie Hodge, and he gets stopped at the goal line. So the Aztec defense stiffening down there. Chris Johnson coming from the secondary stuck his nose in there. And Hodge, the freshman fullback out of Zanesville, Ohio, does not get it in. Well, San Diego State has done a good job in the past in goal line defense situations, making it tough for the opposition to score. Third down. Rams are 2 of 12 on third downs. They're going to run it. Copeland sweep right falls down. He was trying to cut back inside. Romero had blocked out on John Lewis and Hodge reading the, uh, I should say, Copeland reading the block. Tried to cut back inside and lost his footing. So it's fourth and goal, and the ball is at the two, and we're going to have a timeout call. Boy, oh, Bruce going against the book there, taking the ball off the line of scrimmage and running a wide sweep, allowing the Aztec defense time to pursue and hem Copeland in. That's a big fourth down play for Colorado State. So CSU will talk this over. It'll be fourth down and two with five and a half minutes to go. Next Saturday night, the showdown. At stake, first place in the WAC. At stake, Holiday Bowl berth. San Diego State, Brigham Young, 7.30 p.m. Plenty of tickets available. Boy, it'd be great to see 60,000 here wearing red and black. Aztecs and the Cougars will be on the air with a radio broadcast on the Mighty 690 at 7 p.m. with the Aztec Playbook Show. And at 7.30, the Aztecs versus Ty Detmer and the BYU Big Play offense. San Diego State Brigham Young. The winner goes to the Holiday Bowl. The guy that doesn't win may wind up in the Freedom Bowl or the Copper Bowl. And the rumor mill is the Freedom Bowl would like to match BYU, San Diego State loser versus Stanford or UCLA. What a doozy that would be, huh? Yeah, I tell you, San Diego State obviously would like to get into the Holiday Bowl. That's what they prepared and worked hard all season for. But they really, their, their goal at the beginning of the year, Lee, was to get into a bowl game. Beating Colorado State tonight basically assures the Aztecs of that. Then they take the next step next week to try to get into the bowl game they'd like, and that would be the Holiday Bowl, the conference championship. Now, if they don't go to the Freedom Bowl, the Copper Bowl is knocking at the door, and the Copper Bowl is interested in dragging somebody from the Big Ten, maybe Indiana, maybe Ohio State. So San Diego State, BYU, going to have some options after next Saturday night. Now, to steal a line from you, the Aztecs' favorite sport right now is football, but their second favorite sport is bowling. Anywhere would be a coup. They just like to be able to play after the game November 30th. Five and a half minutes to go in the football game. Boy, this does not look like a three and six football team. Colorado State has come in here and just hammered and pounded it with them. Well, this is a fun place to play. Aztecs always take the opposing team's best shot. It's fourth and goal. Verdugo with one running back. Verdugo back to throw, looks, throws, down on the goal line, caught, touchdown! Mark Holmes on an out pattern, caught a two-yard touchdown pass from Verdugo. Hi, Kevin Verdugo showing me a lot there. He drops back in the face of a blitz. It's just a little half roll left. He's got to throw over Eric Duncan, over uh, to Raj Smith, between John Lewis, low to the outside. Mark Holmes doing a nice job making a low grab. He comes in motion to the center, goes back to the outside. That's just a great throw and a great catch. Not much you can do defensively about that. So five and a half minutes to go in the game. Colorado State scores his third touchdown of the quarter. They're going for two. They're going to option it. Here's the pitch to Copeland. Runs to the corner, tries to cut inside, gets down to the goal line, gets in. He got across the goal line and then was punched out. The Aztec defense thought they had stopped him. Copeland got extended, got the ball across the plane before the force of the defense pushed him back. And the two-point conversion makes it 35 to 32, San Diego State. And Colorado State is three points within tying this game. You've got to give credit to Brian Copeland. There are four Aztec defenders just tattooing him, but he won't go down surging and carrying the Aztec defenders into the end zone. He's a fine running back. Most 
Earl Bruce, Bruce coach team will always have one running back that will give you fits. That running back for them this year is Brian Copeland. So now the Aztecs huddle up with Al Luganville and their special teams coaching staff with five and a half minutes to go in the game. I'm not so sure I would uh, assume that San Diego State would be looking at an onside kick because I think the last thing CSU wants to do is put them on a short field. I think they'd like to hammer it deep and try to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, to an extent, except the best time to try an onside kick is when the opposition is not expected. It would be surprising, but it wouldn't be out of character. The Aztecs have their hands team expecting the onside kick. On to boot it away, Paul Ranzau. Darnay Scott is the deep man, but San Diego State's got skill guys lined up at the 45 and at the 40. He's going to kick it high, he's kick it short, and kick it away from Darnay Scott. He's got it on the run at the 20, goes right to the 25, looking for a wall of blockers, gets hit and gets knocked down as he got it to the 27-yard line. So the Aztecs with five minutes and 24 seconds to go in the game will take over first down and 10. That drive by Colorado State, eight plays, 59 yards, two-yard touchdown pass to Mark Holmes. So the football sits at the 27-yard line. Boy, back-to-back -back big plays by Brian Copeland, though. Got, got him that drive, didn't it? Yeah, there's no question about it. Here is Lowry, runs Falk off the left side. Falk fights for a couple of tough ones, gets it out to the 30, and is dropped. Boy, he looks all the way back from the rib and lung injuries, huh? Yeah, he does. He's, you know, interesting thing, too, Marshall is going to get fatigued. If there's one thing that, you know, that, the, that the layoff didn't help Marshall with is that's what his, his, his fatigue factor is. The game wears on, he's probably more tired than anything else. Aztecs can't you know, pull everything in and get into a shell. They have to stay in their offensive package, allow David Lowry to throw the football to sustain a drive. Second and eight from the 30-yard line. What a struggle. We get movement at the line of scrimmage. Lowry tries to quarterback sneak it and gets stuck pretty good, but we got a penalty against CSU. As the right side of the defensive line penetrated. So they'll take five on that one. Kevin Macon again, Lee, doing the smart thing. David Lowry using his cadence to draw him off sides. Kevin, when he sees it, snapping the ball. Anytime you can pick up five without snapping the ball and running to play, that's smart Offsides. football. Offsides against Colorado State. It was 3-0 at the end of the first quarter, CSU. Aztecs scored two quick touchdowns in the second quarter to make it 14-3. It was 28-10 San Diego State at the end of the third quarter, and look where we are now. 35-32 Aztecs in the fourth quarter. Lowry to throw. Look, sideline pattern caught by the receiver out at the 45. Ahead to the 47 to the 48-yard line. Patrick Rowe garners another one. First down, San Diego State. Yeah, and Patrick Rowe gar garners another one. He now is the all-time Aztec leading receiver, breaking the record, held by Tim Delaney. Well, he's just been a great player over the years for San Diego State. The amazing thing, he's done it in two years. No question about it. No question about it. What's going to be more interesting is... How long will it take Darnay Scott to attack Patrick Rowe's record? First down and 10. It's out at the 49-yard line. Just over four minutes to go in the game. They're going to run a draw. R running back Pittman gets hit behind the line of scrimmage. Steps out of a tackle. Crosses the 50 and dives into the 49-yard line of Colorado State. A couple of tough yards there. Clock continues to run. Three minutes and 59 seconds to go. We'll go down to Brad Sesmat after the next snap. Aztecs lead 35-32. Run the ball, run the clock, run into the locker room with a win. Be thankful you survive. Second and eight at the 49-yard line. Lowry wants to throw. Looks left, throws an out pass. Caught. Nice catch by the receiver, Will Tate. He gets it to the 47-yard line. Let's get down to the San Diego State sideline. Here's Brad Sussman. Lee, a couple of plays ago, Marshall Falk came over to the sideline and doubled over in pain. Aztec trainer Brian Berry, some of the team doctors met with him as well. You can see that they're working on him on the sideline. We're not quite sure what the injury is as of yet. We'll try to get you up to date on this injury situation with Marshall Falk. Yeah, Brad, it looks more like tightness or a cramp. Nothing to do with his ribs. Third and six, three minutes to go in the game. Lowry to throw, the blitz comes, sideline pass, caught by the receiver at the 40-yard line, but he gets hit at the first down marker. Coming up from the secondary, Vincent Booker. 
crunching tackle on Darnay Scott. Scott tried to step out of the first tackle, and Booker came back and leveled him. They are right at the first down marker at the 41-yard line. David Lowry facing an all-out Colorado State blitz, throwing into the teeth of that blitz, a little hitch route to Darnay Scott, doing a good job making the first man miss. Booker stop, stopping him apparently short of the first down. If it is, what a crucial fourth down call for San Diego State. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go in the game. They're going to bring the chains in. I think he's short. We'll see. The critical factor is by how much, if he is short. Sticks down, short, by about a half a yard. It is fourth and inches. What are they going to do? Run it or punt it? Well, you know, there's the call, and there's there's the play in there. Boy, this is a call if you ever needed to make one. What do you do if you're San Diego State? The temptation would be to punt the ball and pin Colorado State deep, or do you try to win it right here? Well, I think they're going to win it right here because the quarterback is on. They're going for it. It is fourth down and half a yard at the 42-yard line of Colorado State. Pittman is the running back. Two wide outs, two tight ends. One running back movement at the line of scrimmage. Colorado State jumps outside. What does that sound like? You tell me what the normal cadence would be. You tell me what it sounded like seconds ago. Let me tell you what they did to Lee. They went up to the line of scrimmage. They had no intention to run in the play. All Aztec offensive linemen down in a four-point stance. David Lowry, all he tried to do was get Colorado State to jump offside. They're not going to move. They're bunched in tight. They want, if, if, if Colorado State doesn't jump in the five-yard penalty, they punt the ball. David Lowry, hut, 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 hut. Anything they can do to make them jump off sides, that's a great play call. You send in a play, you say, don't run a play, just try to draw them off sides. John Pulaski was the guilty party, first down and 10. They're going to run the football, coming left, Pittman scoops outside, crosses the 35, and gets into the 32-yard line. But you've got to give credit to Wayne Pittman. He's been on the sideline all game long after coming in for three weeks and doing a great job. Now he's asked to hang on to the football, stay inbounds, and ensure a victory. What a hero. Patrick Rowe, 148 career receptions, 2,542 yards now next to his name in the record book. Two minutes to go in the game. Second and five at the 31. One running back, Falk, is back in the game. They're going to run it. Falk, off the right side, gets knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Pagel along with Gasser. Gasser must have 15 tackles tonight. Let's get down to the sidelines, get an update on that Marshall Falk injury. Brad? Lee, the injury to Marshall Falk, he just told the trainers he took a helmet on his left thigh. He was up on the sideline trying to stretch it out. He didn't think it was anything serious. He says he'll be able to finish up the ball game. A minute 44 to go. Colorado State burning a timeout. It'll be third down and five for the Aztecs, and the football is sitting at the 31-yard line. Colorado State's defense has come over to the sidelines after jumping offside. Aztecs were looking at a fourth and one, and CSU jumped offsides, giving San Diego State the first down and has allowed them to run a couple of more plays in about 35 to 40 seconds off the clock. Well, Earl Bruce's club didn't throw any towel in. They've lost six of their last eight, but there was no quit. Well, what a job he did last year. First time in 42 years Colorado State had been to a bowl game. They not only got to go to the Freedom Bowl, they beat Oregon in the Freedom Bowl. First postseason bowl appearance since 1948 when they played in the then known Raisin Bowl and beat Occidental. Where do you come up with these? I, I want to follow you for a week just to find out where you get all this information. I'll wear you out. A raisin bowl. A raisin bowl. All right. Minute 44 to go in the game. Aztecs are huddled up back at the 32-yard line. Coming up at the end of the game, we'll go down on the field to talk to Coach Al Luganville. Coming up at the end of the game, we'll talk to our offensive and defensive players of the game. Third and five. The ball's at the 31. Three wide receivers. Lowry will throw on third down under pressure. Throws it over the middle. Max, he's got it. In at the 26-yard line. First down, San Diego State. 
A little curl pattern underneath, and Maxi caught the ball in traffic. First down, Aztecs. Uh, and Larry Maxi earlier in this game dropped one right in his midst that time. He makes a very, very difficult catch. Ball was thrown behind him. He laid out in a reverse angle position. Bob Stratman with the coverage. That was a great catch to preserve an Aztec drive. The ball is in at the 26-yard line, and the clock runs. A minute 25 and counting in the game. And the Aztecs have it first down and 10 at the 25. David Lowry, he's 10 of his last 10 passes. What a game he's played. One running back. It's going to be Falk. Here comes the counter. Going left, 25, 20, down to the 15. Puts his head down and knocks out of bounds. Got it into the 12-yard line on the counter play. He gets 12 on the carry. Just to play the Aztecs have run and run and run and run. Marshall Falk, he's just going to fall. Carson Liamidi, Jim Jennings over the left side. He's got the read of the blocks down, the timing now. Boy, it just seemed all game long he got better and better and stronger and stronger as the game went on. The ball is in at the 12. Falk is 161 yards on 29 carries. First and 10. Falk coming right. Big block. Got room to run. 10. To the goal line, to the end zone, touchdown, San Diego State. Lee, there are not too many running backs in the country that are going to make a run like that get you a touchdown. He just kept bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And finally, he got to the corner of the end zone, made a nice layout to get the ball inside the corner pylon for the score. you got to give credit again to Merton Harris and Patrick Rowe for screening the defender's down there, but boy, Marshall gets hit on the five, keeps his leg driving, extends the football, doing everything that you teach a running back to do. Boy, Dan Underwood, he must be the best coach in America, huh? Boy, what a success story. Here's Trackus, point after, it's up. And it is good. So the clock stops with a minute one to go in the football game, and the Aztecs lead 42 to 32 in a shootout. And with a minute one to go, it still isn't over, is it? Now, the problem is that Colorado State just has not been able to stop San Diego State. When they needed this drive, they took four and a half minutes off the clock, and they went 10 plays and 72 yards. Some big plays and big pass receptions by Patrick Rowe, a great pass reception by Larry Maxey. And the more you give the ball to Marshall Falk, the more chance he has of breaking one, breaking one. The last two times he touched the ball, made two impressive runs to get the Aztecs in the end zone. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification from Baja to the Canadian Rockies. Up and down the West Coast, you're listening to Aztec football. Lee Hamilton, along with the quarterback, Mark... Lee Hamilton, along with the quarterback, Mark Halda, Brad Suspect down on the sidelines. Earl Bruce's club just not able to slow down San Diego State, regardless of what kind of rally Kevin Verdugo and the freshman quarterback, Anthony Hill, have been able to generate for the Rams. 61 seconds away from going to the game against Brigham Young. And the great chase for first place in the WAC will come down to 7.30 next Saturday night here at the stadium. There are still tickets available by calling Teleseat, by calling 283-SDSU, or by stopping here at the stadium first thing Monday to buy tickets for the Aztecs Coop game. Yeah, and Al Luganville is leaving about 65 tickets for the University of New Mexico for their helping hand in this showdown. Here is the kickoff. Steve Hodge, the running back, I should say Romero, the running back, returns the ball out to the 29-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 with 56 seconds to go in the game. And San Diego State on their way to victory will meet Brigham Young, Ty Detmer next Saturday night. Well, Lee, you know, the last three weeks, the Aztecs, their margin of victory has been seven points or less. It's a 10-point ball. It's a blowout to them, isn't it? Yeah, amazing. When they need it. Verdugo. A couple of wide receivers to the left. Sends Holmes in motion. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Penalty flags. 
Verdugo avoids the rush, looks long, got a guy wide open, and it's incomplete, and we get a second penalty flag at the 25. Remus was wide open down the far side of the field. The ball was a little bit underthrown as Primus came back for it. He got hit. We're going to get, I think, offside San Diego State at the line of scrimmage. Pass interference. San Diego State back at the 20-yard line. Now, you talk about punching out, leaving work early. San Diego State defensively. Ramondo Stallings jumping offside. Then the Aztec defensive backs. How do you get beat deep with 49 seconds to go? Ron Mims is going to ask that question, and I'm sure he'll find out. Boy, San Diego State taking a nap on that play. Lucky for the Aztecs that that pass interference is only going to be 15 yards. And Carlos State have the ball in the Aztec 30. 23 penalties on the night. Aztecs scoring on a 10-play, 72-yard drive, capped off by the 13-yard run by Marshall Falk. Colorado State, as long as there's a tick left on the clock, has got a chance to put the sucker back in the end zone. Just another routine day in the whack. <laughs> the ball's at the 43. I wonder why coaches don't beef about that pass interference rule, why they don't change it. Well, they're coaches, Lee. First and 10 from the 43, Verdugo. Back to throw, gonna scramble, gonna get hit, avoids a tackle, runs. 40, 45 to the 50, and then gets hit helmet high. Boy, what a shot humped around the helmet by Romano Stallings. Verdugo gets the ball into the 48-yard line. See, so Verdugo there had a problem, Lee. His offensive lineman was trailing him because he was faster than his offensive lineman. He kept waiting for to, to get a lead block. As a quarterback, you always want to stay behind those linemen. Does a good job of scrambling and breaking containment, but he looked like he was looking for a block that wasn't going to come. Colorado State takes their last timeout. Coming up right after the game on the Mighty 690 Southern California Sports Radio. L.A. Kings hockey versus the Edmonton Oilers. Don't forget tomorrow, San Diego Chargers football against the Seattle Seahawks. Join us for all of our pregame festivities. The tailgate talk show at 10 a.m., the countdown to kickoff at 11, the play-by-play -play at 1, Chargers and Seahawks. Next Saturday night, Aztecs, final home game of the season versus BYU. Winner goes to the Holiday Bowl. San Diego State would like one more chance to play another home game at the stadium in December. No question about it, and I think more than that, they'd like a chance to get after the Cougs. The Cougs have had a very successful program, and it's been a pretty intense rivalry, San Diego State and Brigham Young. Colorado State, they're lead burning their last time out. Looks like the Aztecs sewed this one up. Second down and one. Verdugo, deep drop, back to throw, rolls left, throws, incomplete. Receiver got hit as Holmes went for the ball. He was knocked down, so it brings up a third down and one. Dang, John Lewis got away with one that time. I don't know if these officials have an early dinner reservation. They may have already missed it. Uh, John making a nice play with his left hand. Looked like he got his right hand on the back of the receiver. No calls, good call if you're an Aztec fan. So the ball's at the 48. Third and one with 28 seconds to go in the game. Two wide receivers, two backs. It's mind-boggling to me why Colorado State hasn't thrown more to Primus tonight. Here is Verdugo to throw. Verdugo looking long, overthrows the receiver and complete. Eric Olson, double coverage. Lee, I agree with you. Greg Primus coming in. I don't know. Again, maybe there is something wrong, but he, since he was returning kicks, and maybe it's San Diego State just doing an outstanding job taking him away. I think coming into the ball game, you figure that you're going to keep Primus from making the big play. He hadn't hurt you. Now, Mark Holmes and Eric Olson have had big games, and Brian Copeland's had a good game, but you really negated Primus. So it's fourth down and one, CSU with 21 seconds to go in the game. Aztecs got to be concerned with how many yards they've given up through the air the last three weeks. Here is Verdugo. They're going to run Copeland. Runs to the 45, down to the 40. Going to get out of bounds. Yes, at the 33-yard line. Ryan Copeland knocked out of bounds there, stopped the clock. Copeland runs off 15 yards on the play. first down. Since the game at Hawaii on the islands, Aztecs defense has been springing leaks all over the place. Copeland's got 22 carries for 158 yards. You know, New Mexico came back here and they used the three quarterbacks. Marcus Goodlow caused them all kinds of problems. Then uh, they went to UTEP and they struggled with Perez. Then Utah, Dolce picked them apart. Carranza's threw for 404 last weekend in the Aztec win over Wyoming. 
And now tonight, Verdugo and Copeland, who is being helped off the field with a twisted ankle, have put up some big yards on the board. So Luganville's got to be concerned. I don't know whether his people are running out of gas or maybe they're gambling too much, but right now they're not getting it done defensively. And you got Detmer, who today set his 54th and 55th NCAA passing record coming into town next Saturday night. Well, I, I, I thought that you had mentioned all the great quarterbacks in the Western Athletic Conference. I, I, th I thought we were through. Boy, well, Ty Detmer, right? he just keeps getting better and better. You know, Earl Bruce made a, made a strong statement. Earl's been coaching longer than football's been played. He says of all the players he's ever seen, all the quarterbacks, Ty Detmer, hands down, is the best. Well, you saw Detmer throw for 343 in the ice up in Fort Collins two weeks ago. Verdugo, first down, going to roll to the right, looks, throws, got a guy open, nice catch, and then it's dropped. It was on the fingertips of Holmes, and just as the Aztec player bumped them as they were going out of bounds, Holmes dropped it. He had it at the 10, and his next step was down to about the 7, and he just couldn't squeeze it, couldn't hold it. Well, that's a great throw by Verdugo. Put it over one Aztec defender in front of another. Holmes, usually sure-fingered, makes that grab. That time, just lost concentration. Give credit to John Lewis for knocking that ball out. And getting back to the BYU game, Lee, owner Val Luganville is going to make a phone call to R.C. Slocum. Texas A&M because he found a way to stop the Cougars last year. Final play of the game coming up with eight seconds to go. Verdugo off play action. Throws, sideline pass, caught at the 21-yard line. And that is going to be the final play of the game as Primus catches it. It's over. Bring on Brigham Young. San Diego State survives an amazing Colorado State comeback. The San Diego State Aztecs, who jumped out to a big 28-10 lead, looked like they had this game in their hands. And San Diego State has to struggle to hold off Colorado State. Coming back to win it, Aztecs hold on for dear life and win this football game by the score of 42 to 32. And up next, San Diego State. Well, Brigham Young next Saturday night here at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. And of course, the game beginning at 7.30 p.m. Brad, San Diego State wins it 42-32. Bring on, bring on Brigham Young. And for our entire broadcast crew, Mark Halder, statistician Chris Visser, for Brad down on the sidelines, this is Lee Hamilton. Thanks for joining us. Have a good evening, everybody. We now join the following program in progress.